Hello everybody, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. I hope you are all doing well. Happy Saturday, my friends. Thank you very much for coming to hang out with me today. Uh, Matij, good to see you. Yakfu, welcome back. High Tech Hub, good to see you. Finland guy, welcome. Fly Delta, good to see you. Rad Dogs in the house, welcome. Captain Nolan's here. Sebastian, good to see you. Captain USA 350, welcome back. Dominic, good to see you. Zemp, good to see you. SR88, gaming, good to see you, my friend. Welcome back. Uh, JBats99, welcome. John Xander Leonard, good to see you. Skyworkers in the house, welcome back. Do Rogue, good to see you. MGI, good to see you. Cap Swede, welcome. Gage, good to see you. JR, welcome back. Dutch, go, going Dutch film, sorry, good to see you. Lone Sparrow, welcome back, my friend. Been a minute, I hope all is well. Um, Trilly, good to see you. Davis, good to see you. Average Aviator, welcome back. Gary P, good to see you, my friend. Tony Baldo's in the house, good to see you, my friend. Sebastian is here, welcome back. It is a Gorgian region, Sebastian. You, you got that damn straight, man. As soon as I was trying to, like, figure out, I went over to Palma, and I was, like, looking at, like, the arrivals and where they come from, and as soon as I saw Bilbao, I was like, oh, done. Yeah. Captain Will, I'm surprised you're alive after yesterday's crash. You'd be surprised how many people reached out to me and, and sent me... A DM that you crashed an airplane live on VATSIM. So how many is that for you now? How many how many hull losses have you had? Don't catch up to me, man. I've only had I think two or three hull losses on my entire 
streaming career. Uh, Greg Elwell, welcome in. Vicente, good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope all is well. Uh, Stephen Nolte, good to see you, man. John Zander, welcome. Johan, good to see you, dude. Wayward, welcome. Marco, good to see you. Mr. Javis, good to see you, my friend. Um, college, dude, welcome back, man. Hope you're doing well. Tenure to mobile, welcome back. Good to see you, dude. Uh, Simmer Singh, welcome in. Lightspeed, good to see you. Stefan, good to see you as well. Uh, wonderful. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks so much for coming to hang out today. Really do appreciate it. Some smart wings ops i think we've only ever done smart wings once and we did it in and out of prague i believe that they're a uh czech republic airline czechia airline i don't know that's two in one week on your streaming career so embarrassing well i mean that's what happens when you fly the fucking captain sim triple seven you're setting yourself up for failure my friend i bet you that wouldn't have happened if you were in the pmdg or the phoenix or the flyby wire but you're in the Captain Sim 777, arguably one of the worst planes ever created for the simulator. So, yeah, you definitely asked for it. You got that damn right. Uh, getting sick of all the previews. Yes, I saw that the um, Fly-By-Wire team released another preview for their 380. Uh, this is the type of video, if I'm being honest with you, chat, this is the type of video that I was expecting from PMDG. I thought that we were going to get a way more in-depth kind of review of the 777 the other day when they kind of planned their live stream. Um sucks i guess we'll leave it up to fly by wire so i got a like, super runny nose or something all of a sudden um we'll have to leave it up to uh we'll have to leave it up to uh the fly by wire team to keep our uh our interests peaked i guess if you will uh but yes lots of teasing lots of promotions hopefully fingers crossed we get both of those airplanes soon we get the 380 we get the 777 everybody's happy you know so um yeah it was pretty cool we can watch it during uh during our cruise if you guys want i thought about that being a kind of like a cool little um a cool little idea it would be kind of neat for us to do that check give me one sec i gotta blow my nose like it's driving me absolute bananas give me two sec I'm sitting here before stream, everything's fine. As soon as I go live and I start talking, my nose just starts leaking. I, I don't know, it's the weather, man. Got super warm last week, now it's like kind of like chilly, hovering around zero now. <coughs> so, yeah. The textures were not so good on the uh, 777 from the video. Hard to tell for the video, man. There's a lot of compression that goes on on YouTube uh, to kind of, it, it all depends how they would have done it, man. It obviously wasn't rendered in 4K, so. Uh, I, I wouldn't really look too much at like presentation that way. There's so many like little editing and stuff that you can add to it and tools that you can do to it. So, um, yeah, that, that would be why. Uh, Tired Shebus, welcome back, man. Hope you're doing well. Yes, you've not seen the Flybar 380. Yes, we'll watch the video when we get up to cruise altitude. Friends, without further ado, let's jump inside the aircraft. Let's get this bad boy programmed, ready to rock and roll. About an hour and two minute flight, I believe, from Bilbao down to Palma de Mallorca. We haven't been there in a very long time. Very excited for this one. Looking forward to it. Should be a wonderful, wonderful flight down there. Uh, again, we're scheduled at about an hour and two minutes. Hour and two minutes in our smart wings. Uh, ICAO and, uh, sorry, ICAO is TVS. Call sign is Sky Travel. It's kind of new. We, again, we've only ever flown Smart Wings once, and I think it was years ago. So let's enjoy this. Let's have some fun. We'll jump inside the aircraft. We'll get this bad boy programmed, ready to rock and roll. First thing is first, overhead panel. Battery switch can come on, bring life to the aircraft. We've got the ground power turned on as well. That's going to power up the aircraft. You can see here we've got some volts and all that fun stuff. Good. Let's go all the way upstairs. We'll get our IRS left side and right side set to the nav position. Continue our flows down here. Yaw damper can stay off. We'll get the forward fuel pump on. We're sitting on ground power and battery. That's all good. Get some brightness up here on our panel. Just make things a little bit easier and legible. We'll go and get our emergency lights on. No smoking to the auto position. Window heats can go on. You guys can see all that, right? Window heats can go on as well. Good. Um, hydraulic pumps will stay off as well as our probe heat. Packs are in the off position. Isolation valve is open. Engine bleeds are on. APU bleed is off. Perfect. We are going up to 32,000 feet today on our flight down so we'll bug up flight level 320 good uh landing elevation into palma de mallorca i'm pretty sure it's like sea level uh airport elevation 25 feet so we'll set 50 
just like that. There we go. Cool. Everything looks good there. We'll get some logo lights on. We're already boarding, so you already saw all that process. So we'll just come down here to our electronic flight bag. Uh, we'll click on this guy. We're going to request our data from Simbrief. Beautiful. You can see we're going from LEBB Bilbao over to Lipa Palma de Mallorca. There is our... Oops, forgot you can't do that. There is our flight plan there. Uh, I'm going to unpin you. Thank you. <clears throat> There's our flight plan there. So, again, not a crazy long flight. We're just going basically all the way down uh, the entire length of Spain. We're going to fly right over top of Barcelona, so that should be cool. Some really cool views of Barcelona. And then we'll probably start our descent somewhere around uh, here, I would assume, down into Palma. And we are landing on where well, we're expecting 2-4 left into Palma. Um... I will check at our parking. We'll see if the parking makes sense for us to land on 2-4 left. Uh, of course, it doesn't show where they parked, so bear with me. Maybe they'll show it on this one. Uh, yes, this one they do show where they parked. Okay, so yes, 2-4 left is what we want to expect uh, based on where we are parking the aircraft. Beautiful. So that's done. That's all plugged in. Let's come down here. I'm going to get some background brightness up on this guy. Good. Going to get some floodlights. Going to get some main panel brightness up as well. Uh, I'm going to turn down my screens. You guys know I find the screens look a little bit better if you turn them all down. The brightness is a little bit too much um, sometimes. So that looks good on the brightness there. Come down here. I'll get some panel brightness up on this guy as well. Uh, okay. Beautiful. Um, let's come down here. We're going to go to our FMC tab. We're going to go to our pause in it. We're going to go grab our left GPS. We'll scroll back. We'll set that. Good. Go to our route tab. We're going to do our flight plan request. You can see we're going from LEBB to LEPA. That is all correct. We'll select that one. We're going to set payload on the aircraft. Good. We're going to set fuel on the aircraft. Good. We're going to select route. Good. Uh, I also think we're in pounds, which we don't want. We want kilograms, chat. So let's go to FS actions. Uh, sorry. PMDG setup. Aircraft displays uh, kilograms return return clear good thank you all right we're gonna go ahead and load our route <clears throat> I will confirm that all of the numbers still match 6.3 on the fuel uh, 6.3 on the fuel okay all of that looks good to me and we'll make sure that our zero fuel lights look good route uplink is loading so again give that a little bit of time and then we should be able to activate and execute beautiful uh let's see what the winds are doing here in bilbao so if we go here go to weather met our approach showing winds 190 at six uh 190 at six probably means we're taking runway one two for departure today chat so we'll go ahead and plan that we'll go to our departures we are going to plan for the uh papa papa november to golf departure papa papa to november papa papa to november uh, Papa Papa 2 Golf, sorry. Yep, no problem. Papa Papa November 2 Golf out of runway 12. We'll execute that. Good arrivals today into Palma de Mallorca. We are planning for the Lori 1 Papa arrival. And we're going to plan for the ILS... Uh, let's see, chat. We don't know what we're doing. Lipa approach. <clears throat> going to be on to the ILS 2-4 left. We want the Zulu. Or do we want the Yankee? Uh, Zulu, Yankee. Not much of a difference. We'll just take the Zulu because it's number one on the list. ILS, Zulu. Oops, wrong. Runway. Erase. Uh, Lori one Papa was it? Yes. And then we're gonna pick the ILS Zulu two four left. And if we look at our arrival, it's gonna take us all the way out to uh, where does it take us to? I think if we're uh, the Lori one Papa, so that is the one Papa. The one Papa takes us to POS Polin Polenza. Polenza VOR. So if we come down here, we should see POS, and we'll select that. Not the POS that we're thinking of. Uh, Polenza VOR. We'll go ahead and execute that. Perfect. Let's go to our legs page. We'll scroll through. <clears throat> we'll make sure we have no crazy discontinuities, which it doesn't look like we have. Wonderful. Everything looks good to me, chat. Let's go back to our knit ref. Let's plug in some numbers here. Zero fuel weight, 61.4. That is exactly how it is matching on Simbrief. So that is all good. Um, let's go ahead and plan our fuel. We'll go 6.3. Reserves, we're going to go with 2. We're going to go with a cost index. We'll go with whatever the aircraft tells us. What do they want? A cost index of 20. 
So we'll bug up a cost index of 20. We're going to do our perf init request. We'll let the aircraft kind of figure out what that wants to do. Golf November, November Golf, uh, November Wow. Yes. <coughs> it's a mouthful for that one. Mviation, good to see you, my friend. ND, good to see you, dude. Have you considered doing an EPL? Listen, man, I, I, I get asked all the time, obviously, right, with, with how much I've taught myself in, in, in flight sim over the years. Insanely expensive. Like, I can't even begin to explain to you how expensive it is to get your license in Canada. If I were to go, let's say, right now, off the street, go for my ATPL, you're looking anywhere between $130,000 to $170,000. I don't know about you, I don't have that kind of money sitting around. Uh, I, I don't have family members that would be able to help and stuff like that it's just it, it's just for some people it's unattainable man uh, with today's current rate of borrowing money as well i don't know about you, where you guys live but the interest rates here in canada right now are 899 could you imagine paying nine percent interest on a hundred and fifty thousand dollars borrowed money buddy you'd be paying that back for the next 25 years it, it just it's Unless you have somebody that is willing to lend you the money and give you the money or you have the money Let's say you've been saving years and years and years. It's uh, yeah, not a license. I mean a pilot life <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. Uh, yeah for me, man It's a little bit different. I fly a different airline almost every single stream That's kind of the reason you don't see me fly for virtual airlines It's kind of the reason you don't see me use like a pilot's life and all that stuff Maybe it could be a fun idea to have like on the side where we're like once a week or something like that we fly for our airline or something um, but yeah the main reason why you don't see me have using any of those programs is just because we're in a different airline every single week uh, that is the main reason behind us not using a pilot's life or any of those other programs that are out right now um, let's go to our n1 limits here today we're going to jump back to our electronic flight bag we're going to get some departure performance stuff lebb bilbao we are selecting runway 12 for departure we're going to import from aircraft good uh we are going to import the live weather good we'll flip that over 10 20 good all looks well there 24 degrees beautiful uh we'll go optimum optimum and everything else looks good we'll calculate our v-speed today so we're going with a cell temp of 42 degrees so we'll select 42 degrees up top <clears throat> no d-rate on the takeoff so we'll just leave it in the, the takeoff page uh takeoff flaps will be set to position number five uh, we'll select that. Good. We're looking for a CG weight today of 25.5, which is set here, 25.5. Good. And then we've got our V-speeds and our trim values. <clears throat> trim value is looking at 4.7, and we're looking at a V-speed of 40, 42, 48, 140, 142, 148. And there we have it, friends. Aircraft is essentially ready to go. If we jump outside and have a quick little look-see, baggage loaders are done. We're just waiting for the passengers to come on board. Uh, so let's go ahead and spool up the APU. I think we've got like 30 more passengers or something to get boarded up. So we'll spool up the APU. We'll get that bad boy ready to rock and roll. The cheapest flight school I found was 100K. Is that Canadian or is that US? Or is that even like Euro, right? So you have to remember there's... The Canadian dollar is brutal, and that's what kind of uh, it, it kind of makes getting your ETPL in Canada a, a little bit difficult. So, Canadian, got you. Okay. Um, beautiful. Let's study our departure chart here quickly, chat. I believe that we're going to be out to uh, Paplona, I think is where it takes us out to. Legs, uh, PPN, yes, Paploma. Uh, I don't see an initial climb top altitude. Oh, sorry, flight level 80 is our initial climb. So 8,000 feet will be initial climb. We'll bug that up. Good. Um, back to here. We're looking at 148 on our V speed. So we'll bug up 148. And then, of course, we'll be good pilots and we'll bug up our runway heading as well, which should be 120 or close to it. 120. <clears throat> There we go. Traffic can come on. Good. Range rings. Good. I'll turn them on on this guy as well. Beautiful. Flip that over. Wonderful. Cool. Uh, Smart Wings was at Aruba last week. Man, interesting. They're an interesting airline, dude. I don't know a lot about them. They seem to be an interesting airline. APU generators are on. APU bleed is on. Fuel pumps come on. Seat the passengers down. We'll get our anti-collision light on as well. We'll get our hydro pumps on. Beautiful. We'll flip this over to APU gen. Great. We'll go to GSX. We're going to go ahead and prepare for pushback and departure. Good. We'll make sure that our park brake is on. Yes, we can release the ground power. And we will also 
remove the chalks. Beautiful. If we jump outside, you'll see the ground power and the chalks and the jet bridge saying bye-bye. It's a crazy long jet bridge here. Uh, again, got to shout out this scenery, man. I've actually been a, a real big fan of this scenery. I think they did an incredible job. Um, if you're interested in picking up the scenery, there is a link in the description, or you can put exclamation point scenery in chat, whatever is easier for you. Uh, here in Finland, pilot schools only cost around 18,000 euro for a student. Yeah, but that's just to get your, that's just to get your private pilot's license. It's about the same price here as well in Canada for your private license. The big, big, big thing is getting your ATPL, so your airline transport pilot license, ATPL. That's where <clears throat> you've got thousands, tens of thousands, 50, hundreds of thousands of dollars that can be invested getting you to where you uh, to where you would like to be so that that's kind of more so what we're what we're getting at a, a PPL is not that you know unattainable that 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 you could you could do you know but yeah in France the biggest flight school is free with Air France cadets you even get paid interesting I mean we have well we have some of those programs here like Air Canada with jazz they have like an entry level but again the way that the pilot hiring is going in Canada is you literally have to be like <clears throat> the best of the best right and a lot of the time that has to do with like your how, how book smart are you really has nothing to do with how how good at flying you are it's just more can you pass tests with 100 percent or 99 percent right that's kind of how it is same with same with the etc programs here in canada um we are going facing uh we want to face west so we're gonna go that guy all right, let's just confirm we're good around us. Nobody's back, nobody's there. He's pushing back, but that's fine. Shouldn't have any issues. All right, let's go park break off. Good. And chat, look at this. I'm remembering today. We're going to get our block time on. Block time has started. We're about to commence our pushback. Beautiful. Uh, Joseph, thank you very much, man, for the two pound donation. This is 2070 Super, a good card. Thoughts on a laptop for Microsoft. Uh, 2070 isn't bad. Um, th there are obviously far better graphic cards out there, but a 2070 isn't bad. It can definitely do the job. And as far as laptops for Microsoft go, I think anything that you can really use is going to be, is going to work. Just please, 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 if you do make sure, do we close the left front door? I mean, it should have been, um, yeah, all the doors are closed. Um, if you are going to get a laptop and you are going to go the laptop route, just make sure you buy a laptop cooler, man. Do yourself a favor, buy the, buy the little pad that the laptop sits on. Trust me, it'll make a world of a difference, especially when it comes to temperatures, thermals, longevity of your product. Yeah, you're going to want to make sure that you buy a laptop cooling pad. Absolutely. Thank you for the support, Joseph. I appreciate you, man. Is Smart Wings a charter airline like High Fly? I am honestly not too sure. I don't know enough about this airline. I don't know. I don't think they're a full charter service, but I'm not quite sure. I don't know. Again, yeah, the 3DX video was more informative with SIDS and STARS showing the taxiways and displays. PMDG should have done something more details. Well, I don't think that feature is available in the 777, right? SR88, we can't, uh, you know, I don't think people are looking just to add things into the aircraft that aren't there in real life, right? That feature that you're seeing, the map feature, is, is more of a... Look at our going crazy. That map feature is more of a, a feature of the newer Airbus-style aircraft, so... That's why you saw what you saw there. We're gonna stop here and complete pushback just because there is a guy behind us. Gonna be, be careful. Um, hey Cap, are you doing good? I am profan. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Hope all is well. Have a great stream as always. Visiting my grandma since passing my grandfather. I'm um, helping her clean through some things. My gosh, it's weird uh, thought feeling. Star Step, hope you're doing well, man. It is. Yeah, never an easy time, man. I wish you all the best, dude. Just remember, have uh, have fun with grandma and kind of just, just take it all in, dude. Yeah. Agree. Uh, get the best cooler for the laptop. I have a Lenovo Legion with an i9, a 4090. I love being mobile with all my sims. 100%. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. All right, engine number one, start valve open. N2 percentage is rising. Looking at 25%. We're going to introduce fuel number one. Good. Give you a nice wing view. The airport feature, it's called OANS. There you go. You can't file flight plans through vPilot anymore. You can. It just takes you to the Vatsim website as well. I'm, I'm kind of mind boggled that a lot of you guys don't know that you have this, right? So I'm pretty sure 99% of us use SimBrief, especially if we're flying on Vatsim. So if you just scroll all the way down to your Vatsim page, you have this pre-file on a network. It blows my mind that so many people aren't aware of this feature. 
one click, man. VATSIM opens up a new tab. There you go. You file your flight plan. I, to me, this is what I've used for years, literal years. So I'm, I, I, it kind of boggles my mind that people log on to the network first, then file a flight plan kind of crazy maybe it's because i'm a streamer and i'm used to people just like trying to snag like call signs and stuff like that but um yeah man i've sim brief the way to go dude absolute way to go gap how much would you say that you've spent on microsoft and add-ons oh dude i mean i will say this i have spent far less on microsoft flight simulator than i have any other simulator that i've been a part of um so I'm still probably in the tens of thousands of dollars, though, as far as, like, sceneries, add-ons, airplanes, utilities, tools. I mean, then you factor in computers, capture cards. Man, yeah. What do you think about the 380 trailer? We're going to watch it here when we get up to cruise altitude. We're going to watch it together, and we'll, we'll have a little bit of a watch party. Um, TCAS, I'm just going to put in 2,000. Or maybe even, I'm just going to put in 1,000, because I think that's what they use in Europe. Uh, I will make sure that we are on Unicom frequency. No CTAF frequencies here, so we are on Unicom, 122.8. Um, our trim value was 471. Make sure that is set, just past about four and a half. Good, V-speeds are all checked and set, good. Upstairs, engine gen one, engine gen two, yaw damper, flip this over to gen one. pro heat comes on, packs to the auto position, isolation valve auto, APU bleed goes off. A EPU goes off, engine start switches over to continuous, and our taxi light goes on. I will release the park brakes and we'll go ahead and pull ourselves forward and taxi over to runway one two. Football traffic. Uh, what the hell's our call sign again? Sky travel taxi runway one two. Football. All right, cool. Uh, if we open up our airport charts, we can see we're taking uh, the ramp all the way down. We'll go out Bravo and then we'll take Tango all the way down. Cool. Look up, I see you're off to one of my favorite holiday destinations, Love Palma. Man, we haven't been there in so long. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great to fly into there today. Ooh, we got Air Europa. It's another airline we haven't flown in a while. Air Europa. Is a 1660 too old for Microsoft? I wouldn't say it's too old, no. I just don't know I, I just don't know the performance that you would be getting off of that card. That's the only thing, man. Performance would be a little bit, hmm, you know. Air Europa, that's you. Very cool. Yeah, we haven't flown Air Europa in a while. Should probably Air run it back Europa and fly here. some Air Europa. All right, let's go. Flight director, left side, right side. Initial climb, 8,000. Runway heading is set and selected. We'll go VNAV. We'll go LNAV. Beautiful. You ever flown into GCTS? Yes, we have. Plenty of times. We actually did it not that long ago. Uh, and it's up on the channel here as well. So, oh, there's another Air Europa taxiing out to the runway. Have you seen the 380 video? I did watch it this morning. We are going to watch it here together once we get to cruise altitude as well. Nice. We've got a Vueling behind us as well. A Vueling 320. Very nice. Go up to the right. Got the 1616. I desperately need to upgrade. Yeah, like I said, like it's, it's not the worst graphics card out there, but um, as far as like being able to take advantage one of like frame gen and what this simulator can offer i would definitely be going with a 3000 series if not a 4000 series if you could afford it i would be going with a 4000 series all day long yeah. how much fps do you get minimum and maximum on microsoft with frame generation on captain on upgrade my gpu because mine is a dying slowly i've had it since the release date uh, well i mean frame gen essentially doubles your fps you can see right now in the bottom corner we're getting just above 60 FPS, 64, 63 FPS. If I were to turn frame gen off, which I will right now, you can see in the bottom right corner, we're getting about 31, 32. So your frames should double with frame gen. So. Looks like we've got an arrival coming in here as well right now. Very cool. Just had a departure. Nice. Would you recommend the 4070 or would you recommend an AMD graphics card? I do not recommend AMD graphics card. I would recommend a 4070. 4070, 4070 Ti if you can swing it, 4080, all great graphics cards. Yeah. Also, I updated um, my uh, Real Cat Turb. So we should be able to go to about, and you can see we're on version 2.0.2. So this should include now 
the um, this should now include the uh, cloud turbulence, <clears throat> which is cool. Uh, wait, we want turbulence sounds zero. So there we go. We're gonna save and reload. Good. So that's new, and so we should get some turbulence through some clouds now, chat, which is really cool. Which is really cool. Bilbao, he's coming in. Can I use frame gen with my 4070 Ti? Your 4070 Ti has native built frame gen, so yes, you don't need to install a mod. You have it natively supported on your graphics card, which is great. <clears throat> I'm looking for the traffic. I don't see him. We're out here behind the Air Europa. If you want to play in 1440p, something that is technically worse than 3080, like a 6700 XT, is actually better because it has more VRAM. It's not always about VRAM, though. You have to remember, man, if there's anything that I've learned through the years of, of flight simming, it's not always about your VRAM. VRAM is nice. I'm, I'm not denying that, and it, it does... But VRAM is also not the end-all, be-all, man. It also depends on clock speeds. It depends on what type of RAM you're using. Um, there, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not always, oh, well, this card has more VRAM, so it's better. It's not the case a lot of the times, man. You have to remember that. Um, for me, personally, I'm not sold on AMD GPUs simply because of the drivers, the driver support and stuff like that. Just just not not good for me. I'm, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. I'd much rather go with a... Uh, with a an, an uh, NVIDIA card. But that's just me. I'm not saying like you're wrong because you like AMD GPUs and stuff, but for me personally, driver support is huge and, and obviously some of the functionalities like frame gen mod and stuff like that, um, a little bit more tailored towards a, a, a NVIDIA graphics card. 5800X 3D and it's 4070. It's a great option right there. Yeah, as well. Looks like Air Europa is leaving, and then I don't know if we had somebody... Somebody was calling that they were on final. We'll wait and see. Five miles, all right. Available traffic. I'm going to forget my call sign all day long. Sky travel. Available traffic. Uh, Euphoria 78, uh, Zulu Romeo, clear of runway 1, 2... Climbing out on the uh, Papa Papa Gulf to Gulf departure. Bilbo traffic, sky travel, 2435 holding short for the arriving traffic, Bilbo. Alright, we're holding short for the arriving traffic. ETC came online. Well, I haven't got a contact me, so I'm just going to do my thing until I get a beep, 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 beep. What CPU would you recommend to pair with a 4070? Probably a 7800X 3D or a 14700K, 14900K if you can afford it. Probably on the Madrid control is online. Yes, thank you, Tanush. Until I get a until I get a ping, I'm not just going to switch over, man. He's probably got a million other people that he's dealing with. I'll just wait for the ping. Thank you for the support, Tanush. Appreciate you, man. Three dollars on your monthly total. 597. Thank you, Tanish. Appreciate you, man. 1500X3D would be okay with a 47 if you want to save money. I would go with a 1700X3D all day long, man. Especially if you're building a new computer, I wouldn't go 5800, just a little bit older by now. Uh, 7800X3D is, is the CPU to get, especially for flights in. Cap finally fixed stuttering with frame gen. Had to set V-Sync in the NVIDIA control plan on switch it off in-game. Also did my first Vatsim flight uh, last night, Heathrow to Vienna. Dude, your first flight out of Heathrow? You are brave, my friend. Hopefully you were well prepared for that one. NVIDIA has always been better than AMD in my experience. It's not even close. I would agree with you, Bob, but again, I'm not I'm not, uh, I'm not. not here to, to slander anybody else that prefers AMD GPUs, but as far as AMD CPUs, they're definitely right up there with Intel. They're, they're, they're neck and neck, I feel like. But as far as GPUs goes, they're not even close. They're not close to NVIDIA and what they can re re recreate, so. DZ Aviation, how are you, my friend? Hello from Ottawa. Is it gloomy in Ottawa? It is, yes. Good to see you, my friend, from Montreal. Ooh, there's the arriving traffic. Good. Park breaks off. We'll line up and wait. Bilbao traffic. Sky travel 2435, lining up runway 12. Bilbao. Got an i9-13900K looking to get a 7800X 3D. Mmm. I really don't know if you need one simple, but that's just me. 
I feel that that price, you're gonna have to get a new motherboard, you're gonna have to get a new CPU. I don't know if the price to performance is there on that one, man. I would just keep your 13900K and when you're ready for another upgrade, maybe they've got a different, maybe the 9800X 3D is out or something, right? Maybe the 8800X 3D, yeah. I, I don't think you would see that big of an upgrade going from an i9-13900. We got trapped in November 3rd, July 3rd, and we went to clear Channel 3, taxi to the gate, Channel 3 and Tango, the bus. Bilbao traffic, Sky Travel 2435, departing runway 12, Bilbao. Yo, game is on. Sounds are up. Let's go flying, friends. Throttles to 40%. Chrono's on. Toga. Toga. Slight nose down pressure on the yoke. Take off power set. Airspeed's alive. Thank you. Knots. Neutral. A little bit into the wind here. V1, rotate. Rotate. Maintain center line. Beautiful correction. Positive rate Hold it. Gear up. Power's in, gear is off, auto brake is off as well. Flaps up one. Nicely. There we go, 5,000 feet. Autopilot 1 is coming on. Flight deck. Bring those thousands down just a little bit. Good for the climb out. Taking our left turn out. I will bug up our cruise altitude today. We're going up to 32,000 feet. Flight level 320. We'll bug up 32,000 feet. Beautiful. And passing through 6,000, we'll go standard barometric pressure. Standard barrow. Good. And standard barrow on that one. Beautiful. Let's go and get our runway turn off lights off, taxi lights off, wing lights off as well. Beautiful. Joseph dropped another two pounds. Thanks so much, man. Says, thoughts on the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. I've got one over there. It's my trusty, sturdy, probably had that one for like 11 years now. If it works, it works, man. That's that's kind of how I... If it works, it works. I don't think it's too old or too whatever. She works, she works, man. I wish they would just make the Sims where you didn't need to buy scenery. Make it nice the first time. That'll never happen. The amount of resources you'd have to put in for third-party airports around the entire world? No. Definitely not going to happen.
Tyrex, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Hey, cop, I got a 3070 with the frame turning about 40 to 45 FPS. Is that normal? Uh, what do you normally get as far as frames? You should double your frames. So if you're getting 40, do you usually get 20? I don't think so. I, I feel like you should be getting more than that. Maybe frame gen isn't on or it's not working correctly. 10,000 feet landing light start switches. Good. And make sure everything's good up there. We are pressurizing. Beautiful. Cool. Looking good, chat. Climbing up out of Bilbao. There's the contact me that we were waiting for. 132980. We'll give him a call. 262 Charlie Madrid. Good afternoon. Identified. Flight level 3. Evator Chill, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Flight time is one hour and two minutes. One hour and two minutes on the flight time. Logitech Extreme 3D Pro is a tank and controller world virtually indestructible. Had mine for 11 years. Yep. Same here, man. Saw that we're getting IDC system with Pratt Whitney engine variants really soon. Uh, quite excited, especially for the new systems. Uh, are you talking about the Inibuilds A300, I believe? Madrid Control, very good evening. Sky Travel, 2435, flight level 120 climbing. Sky Travel, 2435, Madrid, good afternoon. Let's go 4413. 4413, Sky Travel, 2435. 4413. Good. And we're climbing. We are climbing. Good, we'll bug that out. Looking good. Route to Febri. And then we're going to make our turn to Papa Papa November. Looking good. Oh, man. Alex coming in with the 200 smackaroons. Alex. Absolutely incredible, my friend. Huge, 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 huge. No floaties to you, dude. Thank you for the support. That is incredibly I'll kind. Guys, can you please get some love and chat for Mr. Alex it's dropping the fat $200 donation. Thank you very much, Alex. I appreciate you, man. Incredibly kind, dude. Incredibly kind. Thank you very, very much for your support, man. We'll let Amy read that one out. I wish you all the best, dude. Anxious and excited, I remember. I remember doing mine last year, so... I wish you all the best, my friend. If you've made it this far, just know that she is uh, she's most likely going to say yes. I have full faith, my friend. Thank you, dude, for the $200 donation. And, of course, I wish you all the best. Please come back to tomorrow's stream if you can and let us know the results of, uh, of your proposal this evening. But thanks for your support, man. I appreciate you, dude. Incredibly kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Alex. Why is Pama de Morocca a captain's only landing? I think we're thinking of a different airport, Ape. I don't think Palma de Mallorca is a captain's only landing. It may be, but I'm not quite sure. Which airline is the paint scheme? This is uh, Smart Wings. Smartwings.com. Madrid Control, uh, good day, Alpine uh, 5 to Tango Hello, Lima. CPT. About to propose to my girlfriend in two hours. You got this. Really anxious and excited. You got this, man. Alex, thank you for the support, dude. I'm also going to get you up on the leaderboard with that one. Huge no floaties to you, my friend. Thank you, dude. Incredibly kind, dude. Truly do appreciate that, Alex. I'll get you up on the leaderboard here. Madrid, hello, Speedbird, 4 Romeo Echo, flight level 350, inbound. Yo, Alex, up on the leaderboord. Let us know how it goes tomorrow, my man. Steve Wish you all Romeo the best, Echo, too. Madrid, good afternoon. It's Quark 727. Are they a budget airline? I don't know much about Smart Wings. I think so. 4 Romeo Echo. I think so. Sky Tower 2428, descent flight level 100. Flight level 100, Sky Tower 2428. Country control, good afternoon. Runway 8, November, Mike, flight level 270, inbound. Uh, Ryanair, 8 November, Mike, identify, play level 370. Stellar views, it is. Beautiful views. 
beautiful views. Captain, I've been approved for CT, uh, CPT. It's going to happen on the 30th of March uh, or the 6th of April. Probably the 30th, 03. Uh, best of luck, Alice. Very good. You sound very cool, man. Oh, you can take a holiday direct budget direct airline. It could be. Direct uh, suffix. Uh, Alpine 151. Uh, uh, correction. 103. Alpine 52 Tango Lima identified flight level 380. They have the max on the Tango sim yet? Not yet. Soon. I believe he's thinking of Madeira. Madeira is a captain's only. Yes. Yeah. Captain, flying over radar controller. Should I wait till they contact me? I tuned in last night and checked in, but they got slightly angry saying I needed to go back to Unicom. Yes, I would always wait. That's why, like, somebody, somebody donated earlier and said, like, oh, Madrid control is online. It's like, well... If he hasn't sent me a DM, if he hasn't sent me like a, hey, we see you, please contact us, I usually wait for the contact me. But you're also going to get some controllers that may get a little bit testy with you. They may get a little bit upset if you wait, but I've always done that on my 10 plus years of flying on Vatsun. I have always, always, always waited. All right, you guys want to watch this little video, 10 minute video, should we wait till we get to cruise altitude? Let's wait till we get to cruise altitude, and then we'll watch the video. I'll get it primed and ready to go here on my secondary monitor. Uh, I watched it this morning, so we'll go to history, and it's right here, so we've got that. Let me pause that. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about is the music that they used at the beginning. We might have to just not watch any music, but we'll have that ready for our cruise. Have you ever done an FNO on stream? I have, Carson, yes. Um, not my most favorite thing, just because the FNOs seem to be a little bit just un, kind of not really, I don't even know what the perf what the word is that I'm looking for, but it, it seems like barely controlled Sierra, chaos. Sierra, Sierra, Yankee, Especially the Friday night Sierra, FNOs and stuff like that. Yeah. By the way, Cap, per the VATSIM code of conduct, oh yeah, because everybody uses that, the pilot has the responsibility to contact ATC first. I got kicked for the network a couple years back for not contacting Boston Center. This, hey man, as somebody who has literally like 5,000 hours flying on the network and has been a member for 11 plus years, I have never once been removed from the network. I, like I said, I always wait for a please contact me, and I don't wait for three or four or five of those messages to happen. Just wait for a please contact me, and we'll be good to go. Um, Tyrix, thanks so much, man, for four months. Appreciate you, dude. Wow. Stream labs caught that before. Huge no floaties to you, man. Thank you for your support, Tyrix. I appreciate you. Incredibly kind, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Huge no floaties to you, Tyrex. Thank you for the support, my friend. Appreciate you, dude. Incredibly kind. Uh, Kickford as well for not contacting Helsinki Radar. Yeah, but how many times are they trying to contact you? I could understand if, like, a controller, you know, two, three, four times pings you and you're not responding. There is no way that they're just going to kick you off the network without the controller saying, hey, please contact me. If you're not listening for the please contact me, sure. I can understand that, them kicking you off. Ample, uh, but, yeah. uh, Ken, huge no floaties to you, man. 15 months is nine more months to go for 24 months. Huge no floaties to you, my friend. Thank you for the support, Ken. Appreciate you. Jen and Ken, can't wait to finally meet you guys down at Flight Sim Expo in Vegas. There will be many uh, beverages, stretches, and nice meals had together. Huge no floaties, guys. Thank you. Boston kicked me without once trying to contact me. It definitely happened. I, listen, I, I ain't here to doubt it, Will, but I, I just, I find that hard to believe. I just, I don't know. I've never had issues like that, man. I don't know. Maybe he thought he sent you a contact me and, like, you didn't respond or something. I don't know. Especially Boston Center of all places. Yeah. Uh, I am not running the beta. No, not on the beta. Hello from the country of smart wings. Mikhail, good to see you, my friend. Welcome. I hope you're doing well, man. <coughs> welcome, 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 my friend. Yeah, sorry, Matson was 2011, uh, and it's only happened yeah, once, so dude might have just been having a bad day. That's what I'm saying, man. Maybe he thought he sent you, like, a contact me, 
but he actually sent it to a different aircraft. I don't know, man. It just just doesn't seem very, especially like Boston Center, doesn't seem very Boston Center. You know what I mean? Like, they're usually pretty damn good with their, with, uh, with their ATC. Uh, been wary of beta always with, uh, with it for the master beta. <laughs> master beta? Master beta? That controller does not like controller player is, is all. Maybe. Yeah. I had to think about that for a second. Controllers and controllers and controllers. To be fair, the, um, who's your guy probably would have kicked you if he could. Maybe. Yeah. Cap, what do you think of the 777 video? Good? Maybe. A little bit of a teaser. Who knows? Just went back and watched a takeoff. That was beautiful, Cap. Thank you, Aviation Blaze. Glad you enjoyed that one, man. The Facebook pilots would have you believe that that was poor airmanship, though, so be careful, man. Gotta be careful of those. I thought, I thought the backseat YouTube pilots were bad. Oh my god, chat. I think the Facebook pilots are even worse than the YouTube and Twitch backseat pilots, man. The Facebook pilots, holy macaroni. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. You go to post anything online, holy shit. Thrustmaster posted another one of our videos. Uh, we were flying the A300 the first day, or the second day that it came out. We are flying the A300 into a thunderstorm into... Um, into Memphis, and again, the the, the whole, the peanut gallery, the, the Facebook comment section is going off again on, well, that wasn't very much wind, there was no crosswind there, and that was no wind. You, you, the winds were gusting 9, 9 gusting 14, not the most crazy amount of wind, but I think we can all agree that the winds are... Highly, highly, highly exaggerated when it comes to the simulator. We've heard V1 say it. We've heard Flight Deck to Sim see it. We, we've, we've, numerous real-world pilots have also confirmed that the winds in the simulator don't act the way that they do on the aircraft. It's just not. So, I just find it hilarious that they all come out of the woodwork. Whenever, whenever you you decide to post a video or something, all the real-world pilots come out. And, Actually. I land my Cessna with 17 knot crosswinds and there is no problem. <laughs> it's fucking wild, dude. Absolutely wild. Uh, Facebook, Instagram has the harshest audience for sure. Oh, they're all professionals over there, man. They're all professionals. They all got their PPLs. They fly out of their own grass strips. It's fuck me, dude. Can't keep up with those ones. What are my cat turb settings? Everything's set to default. The only thing I turned off was the sound. It turned sound to zero. Can you please do either Sunwing or Air Transit Ops from Toronto to put to Canada soon again, please. Uh, maybe, Parker. Yeah. No, I, I don't, Mitchell. That, that's why it, it truly gives me a big laugh, man. It gives me a laugh. I, I can't help but laugh. It's like, dude, you're on a thrust... A, a, you're on a literal gaming controller, like, like Facebook page. What do you think they're going to be posting? Do you think they're going to be posting guys flying real-world airplanes doing 17 and 23 knot crosswinds? Like that's what I don't understand. That's what that's what I find hilarious. You're on a literal fucking controller page, Facebook page, and and these guys are getting butt hurt and upset that Thrustmaster is posting my my like I'm a Thrustmaster ambassador. And these guys are like upset that Thrustmaster is posting my landings and my, it's just hilarious, dude. It's actually hilarious. I bet these guys are real fun at parties. <laughs> Ask the Donator Lounge and the Fly Wire Discord said you shouldn't have an issue with the DMCA if you restream the trailer. Thank you, JJ. Appreciate it, man. Hey, Cap, do you think that TFDI, do you think you'll get it? Yes, no. I just signed my, um... I just signed my NDA, so I am now under a non-disclosure agreement with TFDI and the MD-11. So yes, I should be getting it soon, even though I probably can't tell you when I have it for my NDA. I don't know. Anyways, the NDA has been signed by both both parties, so I am now currently under a non-disclosure agreement with TFDI about the MD-11. So. That probably means I'm going to get it soon, one would think, I would hope. Do you still use rolling cash? I don't. I haven't used rolling cash in forever, man. If you have good internet connection, I suggest turning it off. <coughs> He's going to hand us over to Unicom here in a while, or in a little bit, so... Yeah. Wait, you just talked about the NDA. You just disclosed. <laughs> just thought about this. Do you have any plans to fly real? No. 
I do not. Party now going to reach a uh, thousand hours today. Nice, very cool, man. Very, very cool. Uh, a couple of touch the fly by wire sneak peek. We will watch it. Yep. We will. We can chat about it since uh, I'm a CE holder. <laughs> I don't know if that works. Kev, any Air Baltic ops coming soon in the future? As soon as we get the A220, Matt, 100%. 100%. I love flying in and out of Riga. Such a cool ass airport, man. Yes. As soon as we get the A220, we're going to do some Air Baltic. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know why I'm getting a ping now. Probably to tell me I'm over to Unicom. I don't know. Uh, hey, Captain, do you believe you could visit on that day? Uh, maybe. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'll do my best. Uh, Malik, 17 months. Thanks for support, dude. Appreciate you. Incredibly kind, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, you do already have the plane. All right, let's go to the back of the airplane. Let's go to here. We want to... Hold on. You guys are ballers. You guys are sitting at the front of the plane. Sorry. All guys. All guys. Let me go to the front of the plane. Everyone sleeps on Riga. It's an awesome airport. I agree. Yeah, dude. We used to fly in all the time on our... Uh, back in the X-plane days. We had some, uh, we had some really cool scenery. All right, Chad, here you go. Up in first class, you guys got the bougie seats. All right. Um, he's going to send us over to Unicom, like, any second, very soon. America 230, read back correct. Break, break. Well, in Tresero, Alfa Lima, Defenso para 5000, con Alpine. Full screen. Fuck it, we'll watch full screen. Okay. I'm gonna turn that down all the way. I sh we shouldn't have issues with this. We should be good. We'll watch it together. All right. Let's do a chat. Upgrade my PC when I install the PMG 737 from Microsoft and it's not working. Any tips? I don't know why it wouldn't be working. Did you reinstall everything or did you just move your community folder over? Uh-oh, Mopar. Probably feeling better, though, now. Actually insane. I'm gonna put my head down here. Hopefully this is all copyright free music. Looks like it's got the SimBrief integration as well. So same as like the tablet on the 320 Neo, which is great. Let's just turn this down while it's on music. Because we're looking through things. Pretty cool. They've got, obviously you can see here, they've got all the, uh, all the systems modeled as well. 
You've got the insert directly through it. You can see Fly by Wire 380. LFBO to EDDM, alternate of Frankfurt, up at 38,000 feet, cost index of 88. Go to your departure page. Man. It's going to be really cool to, uh, it's going to be really cool to compare. Isn't the A350 the, the, the same type of FMC deal here? Isn't the 350 the same as this? I don't know for sure, but I think it is. So it'll be really cool to see how like fly by wire and any builds are going to make their own, you know? So that should be cool. And this, remember, we were talking about the other day. I was telling people how you can zoom in. This is in partnership with Navigraph. So Navigraph has actually have actually partnered with Fly by Wire, and you can see you can zoom all the way in. You can actually see like your parking stand. You can see the little taxiways. You can change it. You can shift it. You can move the view. I mean, fuck. Hold on. We got to go back and watch that. Look at how like he's manipulating and changing the view. See how we just changed the angle and everything. <clears throat> crazy absolutely crazy absolutely crazy just mindful of the music don't worry I'll, right. I'll put things I on when we you can start the engine at your discretion I thought that was ATC for a second I mean look at those engines Woo! and those are the Rolls Royce right chat Rolls Royce engines I believe Did you know three plus years ago on Fly by Wire, brand new, they made a poll in their Discord for which Airbus to work on next in the 380, which one is why we have this today. Interesting. Oh, dude, the flap noise is insane. Insane. I think it's coming right here, the flap noise. It is. Dude. Fly by Wire was always insane with the sounds. Like, even the 320 is crazy. Fly by wire 3, wait to use super to lose ground. Bonjour. Taxi to runway 1. Watch how we get to use super. Air France super. Papa 100, mic 10. Hold short off runway 1 for right at holding point, mic 10. The ground sounds incredible as well. <clears throat> Dude, wait till you see when he pulls onto the runway. Watch when he pulls onto the runway. Look how wide he takes the turn. Look at this. Look at how wide he goes. He, his nose is almost basically over the edge of the runway. That's him nosing over to line up. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy, man. Might have gone a little bit over there, but pretty wild. You can see you can zoom it out and then it goes into flight mode. Pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy. Looks farther along than the 777. I think that's kind of the point. PMGG doesn't give really much information. Instead of this thing. insane chat honestly by the looks of these things too like it looks like it's close it looks like we got to be like i don't i don't want to give dates out but even look at all like the bugs look at all the bug marks here on the windscreen that's cool but, like they gotta be close if they're showing us this type of stuff now it has to be close it's got to be close see top of descent right here as well top of climb sorry It's got to be close, Chad. Predictive wind shear system is off. Please turn that on, sir. Terrible pilot. <clears throat> Maybe it's not working. You're more hyped about the A380 now? <clears throat> no. I still don't think I'm going to fly it very much. But again, it's just it's just to get, offer us more options, you know? 
<laughs> nice, Max. Super 2 Romeo Foxtrot. <laughs> you are going to do that too, aren't you? I totally see you logging on. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, look at the wear and tear. Oh, has it seen a few tail strikes, chat? Who's that? Who's the pilot? I mean, look at that. Jesus, dude. That texturing was actually insane. Did we see that? Hold on. Can we go back here a second? Look at some of the texturing on that. XP72 must have been flying. Ho! Oh! <laughs> Sorry, Kirk. Love you. Long, long time. Tail strike. <clears throat> That's crazy. Or Captain Will. Maybe it was Will with his control. might be my the feature that I'm looking forward to the most. I'm not even kidding. They have a really cool transition here as well. The airplane pulling in. Look at that thing, dude. Okay. Maybe a little bit excited, chat. I might be a little bit excited to fly this at some point. Just because it's a fucking behemoth. You got the full modeled interior as well. For all you interior nerds. Captain, can we have a cabin tour? Fuck, now I'm going to have to do cabin tours. Ugh. Look at that. Oh, well, they have, like, the wood paneling. Pretty cool, chat. Pretty cool, chat. Pretty cool. No release date, though. No, like, release date, no information of a release. So we are we are still waiting, unfortunately. Still waiting. But freeware. You know. Two decks. Fuck. <laughs> oh man. They're definitely a cool plane. Definitely a cool plane. But yeah. In saying that it's a freeware, I agree, man. Like, hear me out, right? Especially after watching like a video like that. Like it, it kind of surprises me that. Um, they haven't been picked up by Microsoft. Teams like Working Title, Any Builds, um, there's there's too many to go on. There's so many, but like off the top of my head, Working Title, Any Builds, uh, Gaia Simulations. So many of these developers have been picked up to, to contract work through Microsoft. It kind of surprises me with the amount of work and stuff that Fly By Wire has done to this simulator that they haven't been rewarded with a contract from Microsoft. Maybe it's in the works. Maybe we can still expect this aircraft to come out for Microsoft 2024. Maybe it's going to be a default airplane and also subsequently will be available for Microsoft 2020. Who knows? We still don't know. We still don't have any of that information, but it, I, that's the one thing that surprises me. I feel like if there's any development group that deserves to you know get paid for their time and their efforts from microsoft it, it would definitely be fly by wire 
right up there with with any builds and some of those other developers as well but maybe they don't want to go that route maybe they i don't know but who knows man it's uh gonna be an incredible project i'm i'm thinking i'm just i'm i'm in my head i'm trying to think of all the freeware projects that we've had for p3d explain microsoft all over the years this may be the most in-depth freeware project i think that we've ever seen in any simulator platform ever and that's probably speaking volumes to just kind of like where microsoft sits right now um and just how many development groups and how many people and how many just there's so much going on you know do you know people on the fly by wire team i know a few of them max a few of them frequent in the streams they'll come in like um i know the sound guy the guy that does all the sounds for fly by wire uh he's a, he's a big fan of the channel he's in here quite often hanging out and kind of telling me and letting us know like what's new what's coming out they redid the sounds for this and that so um yeah how is fly by wire releasing these products for free because it's just people doing it on their on their spare time man it's just this is this is what i was saying when it comes to the flight sim community it's absolutely incredible you know i think we just missed our top of descent uh yep we're 2,000 feet above our top of descent apparently no problem let me fix that Cat, here for you Chad. nowhere in the take it serious book does it say we can't fly two hour flights with the 380 i'm sure the nitpick police will be okay with it lol enjoy the free bones true i don't know what is going on with my speed either uh i'm gonna go level change and i'm gonna bug my speed up i don't i, I just realized that all of this has just gone haywire all of a sudden not quite sure why. So I'm going to go level change to get us back up to like 290 knots. I don't know what our descent speed should be. I don't even know, like 280 knots on the descent. I don't know why speed decided to do the way that it just did. So good thing we just paid attention to that chat. Uh, we are currently 1,800 feet above profile, but we're coming back up onto profile. So that's good. And what we'll do is we'll throw it back into... Uh, VNAV coming up close here. We're descending at 5,000 feet per minute. A little bit uncomfortable on the passengers. That's okay. Just getting ourselves situated here. We'll go back into VNAV now, but I'm going to go speed, and I'm going to go 280 knots. I don't know why. I don't think there's a speed restriction. I think the aircraft's just being a little bit weird. Um, we have 250 knot speed restriction at POSBA. So we're just going to take those. POSBA, I don't know why it was the speed was floating through the roof so anyways we're good we're back on profile now all is happy all is well uh we need to intercept have a quick little look see here at our airport charts we haven't pinned our charts either we are on the ILS Zulu 2-4 uh our intercept coming out of Polenza uh I see no altitude at Polenza but then we're going to continue on intercepts 2500 we'll take this down to like 4,000 for now and then we'll go down to 2500 when ready so go initial descent 4000 you know what we'll go 5000 initial descent 5000 and we'll go from there uh we can get some frequencies plugged in here as well so 109.3 oh i'm getting pinged by who is this uh this is barcelona control all right 13258 i don't know if barcelona control covers over here but maybe they do one three two decimal five eight. Five two Tango Lima descend uh, inbound the cap bay. Uh, uh, one oh nine three is, is what we're looking for. One oh nine three. Good. Descend two zero zero. Expect the cap bay two whiskey. I'll find five two Tango Lima. One oh nine three. Good. Uh, front course was 237. The Boris sound packs looks good. It does. Um, again, I really want that airplane to be updated before I jump back into it, dude. We need to get an update, especially with that sound pack now. We have to get an update for that aircraft. Like it's just, we have to. Uh, category C aircraft minimums 239. 239. Sky Travel 2435. Go ahead for Sky Travel 2435. 239 Hello, for us. Contact Lores Wampapa, descend flight level uh, 200, 200. 
Doris 1 Papa will descend flight level 200. Uh, sky travel 2435. Alright, 200 for us on the descent. There we go. Hopefully, it doesn't forget about us. Good. Sweet. Arrival and departure uh, on 24 is beautiful and sunny. Day in Mallorca. Should be beautiful. Yeah, we should be getting there just as that sun is. The sun. We're flying real time. Real time, real weather. So it's currently 6:14 p.m. So we should be getting there. Nice, nice sunset for sure. I've bought the PMDD 737-900. Nice. Hope you're enjoying it. I love the 900 variant. I'm gonna do a two-hour flight every day in the 380. <laughs> Just go fly in the Middle East, man. There's so many flights over there that you can do. Uh, rival and departure on two four. Sorry, got that one. Cool. What about the default Microsoft 787? Hmm. It's okay, but it does leave a lot to be desired, man. Not the worst aircraft that I've used. Definitely not the best aircraft. Um, yeah. I, I, whenever I fly the default 787, it just really makes me want a third-party 787. Six, eight, six, fly by wire does take donations. You are correct. They do have buy me coffees. <laughs> yeah. Better to use the 900 or the 800? For which one? The PMDG or the... Sky travel 2435, contact Palma, 119 405 bye-bye. 119-405, Sky travel uh, 2435, we'll see you soon. 119-405, Flip to them. Do we have an ATIS? We have ATIS information... Alpha, 2-4 left for the arrival. <laughs> and who was this again? This was uh, Palma Approach. Palma Approach, good afternoon. Sky travel 2435, ATIS information, Alpha, flight level 200. Sky travel 2435, hello, radar counter, flight level 200. Clear Lores 1, Papa, arrival, runway 24 left, descent, flight level 90. One pop arrival, two four left will descend flight level nine or zero. Um, sky travel two four three five. All right, down to nine thousand feet, and we are on the arrival which we programmed and plugged in. So we're on the Lori One Papa, and we are expecting the ILS two four left. Everything is set correctly, chat. We've got ILS frequencies, we've got minimums, we've got course heading, we've got our auto brake set. We're looking good. We're looking real good. Uh, the only thing that we need to worry about is speed restrictions. So uh, we've got our 250 knot speed restriction here at Pasba. Until then, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna keep 280 knots on the descent. There was no need. The aircraft had us down to 215 knots or something like that. So no need for that. I use Volanta to check what controllers are online. Do you do the same? No, usually not, man. I'll use like maybe one of the websites that are available. There's a couple websites that you can use. There's like, um, uh, what is there? There's VAT glasses, there's VAT USA. There's all kinds of things that you can use, different websites. What routes do you have planned for the PMDG 777? None. I don't plan ahead. Like, I don't even, I don't even know what we're doing on Monday, <laughs> let alone what we're going to be doing in a couple months from now when the 777 releases. I have no clue, dude. No clue. I know that tomorrow... We're doing some uh, Norwegian ops. Been a very long time since we've been out in Norway doing some Norwegian uh, ops tomorrow. So that'll be fun. Uh, Red Nose. Hopefully the 380 will be released before Cross the Pond. Mm. That's April 20th, so we're about a month away. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we'd even be hard pressed to get the 777 out before cross the pond cap 737 rate one through ten the pmdg i would say it's probably a solid eight eight and a half as i always say there's always room for improvement yeah, but, uh, right now, but these aircrafts are damn Madrid, good damn good Madrid, yeah. board. 60 months holy macaroni right now, the man the myth the train flight legend flight. can't call him the flight legend anymore this man is all about right his trains flight. Mr. Schmidt is here. Thank you very much, Schmidt. 60 months, five years. He's one of the very few people to have his own emoji here on the channel, friends. Can we get some damage Schmidt's in chat? It's, it's been forever since we've seen a big old green influx of damage Schmidt's. I still blame Mopar for Schmidt's train addiction, but we'll, that's a different day, different story. 
Come visit me at Flight Sim Expo. We'll talk about it. Mr. Smitty, thank you for 60 months. Incredible. I feel like it's longer. Maybe maybe a couple hiatuses in there as well, but 60 months, man. Thank you for the support. Appreciate you, my friend. Incredibly kind. I was really hoping to see you down at Flight Sim Expo this year. Maybe you'll have a change of heart. Flight level uh, seven zero, and we'll be level for Papa Oscar Sierra. Uh, Sky travel twenty four thirty five. Spike flies twenty one months. And Huge no floaties to you as well, man. Says, well, shit, we almost two years old in this channel. Uh, oh, baby. Three more months till you're repping your two year yeah, badge. Yeah, you thank you for the support, my friend. I appreciate you, man. Incredibly Marbella. kind. Thank you, thank yeah, you, thank you. Appreciate you, dude. Oh, yeah, Mr. Javis coming in with 13 months as well. Huge no floaties to you, Mr. Jarvis. Thank you very much for support, dude. I appreciate you. Incredibly kind, man. 13 months. I just realized I forgot to do this last month. 14 months is like next week. Hey, let's celebrate it while you got it huge no floaties to you my friend thank you dude incredibly kind appreciate you dude thank you thank you thank you buddy all right 250 knot speed restriction i'm going to start rolling back our speed now 250 good your screen is really fuzzy what screen are you looking at i can assure you my screens are not fuzzy i would probably bet that it has something to do with your internet connection sorry i missed the beginning where did we start and where are we going uh well luckily i have this beautiful banner up chat that shows that we departed lebb and we are going to lepa so we are going uh we are going uh, over to uh palma de mallorca <laughs> Max. I don't own any realistic ground services. Should I get GSX? <clears throat> GSX is awesome. Yeah, GSX is incredible. Definitely su suggest GSX. Um, let's see what we have. We had 7,000. Says says 5,000 and above. So Papa Oscar Sierra for 7,000 feet. We're going to try our best to maintain that. We've got our speed restriction now, so I'm going to get the ground spoilers out. Aircraft should be able to. I'm actually probably... Uh, I don't know. We'll see what the aircraft wants to do. You know what? Actually, I could probably put 7,000 in here. <clears throat> and that should give us a descent. Yeah, so we're slightly above profile. But that's fine. We'll leave our ground spoilers out speed at 250 we should descend into it nicely it'll be good a cap 9900 uh 99 hours one hour to go for a thousand hours is that on is that on vat sim or is that on flight sim in general like microsoft flight sim oops sorry let's open up another go around like the jet 2 <clears throat> I think the winds here are real nice. I don't think we have to worry about anything. 230 at 6 knots. I mean, that's blowing right down the runway at 6 knots. Shouldn't be any... Uh, shouldn't be any... Any excuses here today. 1024 on our altimeters. Let's bug those up now so we're not struggling with that when we get ready to go. The winds are perfect. Three at, A few clouds at 3,000 feet. No significant change. Everything's looking good. We should be real good. Real good. All right, speed 250 again. So we're looking good for our speed. We can slightly bring it down to like 240 if we need to. We're back on profile as well, just coming up to 10,000 feet. So we'll make sure our landing lights are on. Engine start switches are over to continue. So we'll make sure that our wing lights are on as well. Beautiful. Sounds can come up just a little bit in the sim as we get ready for the approach. <clears throat> so yes, tomorrow uh, a little bit of a shorter stream. After Papa Oscar Sierra will descend and maintain five thousand cleared for the ILS two four left. Uh, Sky travel two four three five. All right, beautiful. There is the Palma Islands out in front of us, looking good. Will GSX work for 2024? I would assume so, yes. It might need an update or something like that, but I'm assuming that the uh, the team behind it will be able to get it working, no problem. Uh, ground spoilers are armed, green light. 
We'll ding the cabin crew as well. Good. <clears throat> you think the 737 sim in the uh, cockpit in the sim looks great? It does. It does. It's a busy cockpit. It's far busier than an A320, that's for sure. There's a lot more going on, a lot more um, manually. But I do enjoy it. So, wait, Max, you got your CFI license? Incredible. When are you flying up here and let me take uh, two Romeo Fox out for a little trip, Mr. CFI? Yep, yep, yep. What do we have to do, Max? What do I got to do? Tell me what I got to do, man, and I'll make it happen. If I got to drive down to White Plains, I'll, I'll drive down to White Plains. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Blast off in two Romeo Fox. From the visuals, 2024 doesn't look far better than what we have now. I mean... You're saying that as if that's a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't, what we have right now looks absolutely incredible. So even the fact that they can they can take this and make it better. And I'm all for that. And look at that scene right there. Look at the sun setting over the water like that. Come on. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So if they can take this and make it better, even if it's just minimally or, you know. Yeah. No, we could take Golf Mike Tango Tango. True. True. Golf Mike Tango Tango. All right, we are cleared down to 5,000 feet now. <coughs> so continue our descent down to 5,000. Altitude intervenes, so it fo follows it. Good. I'm going to start bringing my speed back down now. I'm going to aim for about 220 knots. Golf Mike Tango Tango sounds cooler than two Romeo Fox. I gotta show you uh, less less as a as an aircraft Golf Mike Tango Tango Max. And when we go flying, he lets me do all the ETC stuff. Well, it's pretty badass, man. He's got a video up on his channel where he uh, he let me do all the IFR. We did an IFR flight, and he let me do all the call for clearance, ground tower departure centers. It was pretty badass, man. It was damn really cool. I think the current sim visuals are spectacular. Uh, I don't think 2024 is a big jump. I think it is in certain in certain scenarios, flight simulation experience. Maybe not in like your average everyday like views out the window. Yeah, I would assume that it's probably going to look somewhat similar to this. But um, I think where it really matters right, is where it's going to show. We've seen the preview video of the fly by wire. We just watched it, Carol. We watched it all together here on stream. Uh, it looks good, man. It looks good. It's definitely getting me excited for the, uh, definitely getting me excited for the 350. 380, not the 350. 5,000 feet is in. Uh, do we have tower online? No. Okay, good. <clears throat> Under the hood, Microsoft would be very different. Yeah, it's under it's under a whole new engine, right? So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. No floaties. Caring for X plane thirteen. <laughs> this fucking guy. Oh shit. I don't know too many people that are excited about X-Plane 13. I know there's probably a few. There's definitely a few, but... Yeah. Flaps 1. Right, Talking to you on Volanta? Thank you, man. Did Flambo Wire have a release date? No, they did not have a release date. Right, at 9 or 8, sorry, Mike. Continue to altitude 5,000. Level it at Bubble. Can it want to do Good to see you, Alex. Hey, will you fly X-Plane 13? <laughs> I don't really fly X-Plane 12 right now, so I don't I don't know how much I would use X-Plane 13. All right, speed's rolling back, 190. We've got our um, localizer armed. There's low capture right there. Localizer, VOR, lock. Approach. Approach. All right, we'll continue approach and we'll expect uh, stand 92. Um, Sky Travel 2435. All right, he wants us at stand 92. 
We're already getting stand assignments. I like it. 92. Do we even have that in here? 92. There it is right there. <clears throat> uh, we'll go Swissport. Good. They're going to be waiting for us down at 92. Um, speaking of which, let's have a little bit of a look-see. Did I arm approach? I did arm approach. Good. We go flaps five degrees. Clear to land, uh, 7-8 to Zulu Romeo. And Glide Slope should be captured. We're 15 miles out, so that's good. Uh, let's zoom in here and see where stand 9-2 is at. Where is 9-2? 9-2 is going to be, ah, nice and easy. Right over here, cool. So we're going to be vacating the runway. We'll probably hit Sierra 1. Maybe Sierra 2. Should probably aim for Sierra 2 and then it would just be into the ramp like that, I would assume. Or maybe give a South Papa, Lima Papa in like that. Okay. Well, we know what to expect now, chat. Good. We have intercepted glide slope. We're now descending on the glide path. Speeds should be good at 180. Um... I'm going to keep 180 until 5. Beautiful time that we're arriving. That sun is setting oh so nicely. 12 was garbage. 13 will be amazing. X-Plane is like Microsoft Windows. Skip a generation. <clears throat> Maybe. I do feel that they were too ambitious with 12, and it's still, like, it's been released for, what, a year and a half, and it still feels like X-Plane's in beta. But... To be fair, x plane has always felt that way prior to the point .1 update. Like, I don't know if you remember, man. x plane 10 was brutal until 10.1 came out. x plane 11, again, filled with bugs and crashes until x plane 11.1 came out. So, maybe there is high hopes for 12.1 and maybe it'll actually do a lot of good to the simulator. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Alright, speed 170, because we're number 3. Uh, I'm going to go flaps 10 degrees. Just help man maintain and manage our speed. Imagine a Google partnership with X-Plane 14. I don't think it'll ever happen, man. I really don't think that would ever happen. I don't think Austin would ever sell off a part or, or take a, a percentage of what he Bravo makes. Approach. And, Good evening, Ryanair. 378 information. Bravo on board. Stand 84. Request I for S5 to uh, Dublin. I mean, back then, Alex, you know, we didn't graphically have a simulator that was capable of, like, wowing us, right? So it really wasn't a big thing. Not the way it is now with Microsoft, you know? Gear down, flaps 15. And our approach speed today, chat, 153. We're going to bug that up now, get fully configured, 153. I am going to get all my lights on. Flaps 25 degrees. And passing through 160 knots, we can go flaps 30, which will be our landing flaps. There's 160 knots, let's go flaps 30. Rolling out. Two four left, good land, sky travel two four three five. Thank you. Having poutine and chicken breast currently. Get jealous. Mm. Does sound good. I have a southwestern style pork chop with some type of corn. We'll have that soon. All right, I'm taking control of the throttles. We've been cleared to land. This is some beautiful weather, chat. We're currently sitting at 1,400 feet. I should probably take control of the aircraft and fly this one down. So, my airplane. Enjoy the arrival, Miami Ghost. Catch you down on the ground. Let's do it. Winds are beautiful. Actually, winds are calm right now. I'm not even getting any wind. Don't kill us? Okay. I'll try not to. I'm in a good mood today. No death is needed. Yeah, 
It wasn't reporting wind, but I was definitely feeling wind that entire time. And now you can see we've got six, seven knot direct headwind, though, so it's nice. We're off the nose of the aircraft. Altitude's good, speed's good. Clear to uh, Madrid, Epama 2 Alpha, 6,000, Wind's a little bit gusty, but it's okay. Nothing we can't handle yet. Uh, Approaching minimums. Correct, clear via Golf Link 1. Holding point to the right. If you wish, have a nearby minimums. Continue. Uh, 50. 30. 20. 10. Uh, you've got seven inches of my fault. Uh, I can wait to travel on. Close down gently, reverse your zone. Right, good. Knots reverser stowed. Auto brake is off, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Sorry, not welcome back. Welcome down to where the hell are we? Palma de Mallorca. Nice. What a beautiful approach, man. Holy mackerel. Uh, so I'm right in front of Santa for looking at the uh, smart wings there. Okay, what a beautiful arrival. Mm -mm -mm. Great landing, okay, uh, great flight. Get travel two four three five. Welcome to Palma. Taxi left on south, right on Papa. Turn nine or two. Left on south, right on Papa. Stand nine or two. Smart wings. Sorry, Sky Travel two four three five. Uh, okay, we are making a left on south and then right on Papa, and we're going up into stand 9-2. Exactly the way that we pictured it. Cool, ground spoilers and flaps clean. Mm -mm -mm. What a great flight, chat. I love landing at this time, man. Just so beautiful. Landing lights are coming off, runway turnoffs are coming off. We'll spool up the APU. Good. Engine start switches go to the off position. Strobe lights go off. Wing lights go off as well. We'll stop our flight time. One hour and one minute. Good. Damn, you're really getting good at these landings. Uh, are, you, are you a professional pilot? Do you have a float emoji? I do. We have everything. Yes, you can spam the float at me. Float. That was actually a decent approach. I don't feel like we we floated that one too much. I actually was pretty happy with that one. Always such a cool landing coming into here, though. It really, really is. And our gate should be right there. Stand 9-2. That's where we're going, chat. I'd love to go here in real life, man. That would be incredible. Absolutely incredible. Remember, guys, if you did enjoy that, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. We're going for 300 likes today. We are doing the return flight, so if you are interested in uh, seeing the return flight back to Bilbao, please do stick around. We should have a nice quick little turn here in Palma de Mallorca. We're going to get our EPU gens on, EPU bleed on. Good. Flip this to gens. Good. And we'll get ourselves into the ramp area. I am going to kill the taxi light. And we are going to be right beside the Air Europa 7-3. Rip OBS? What happened? Don't see any issues? You just gotta be careful putting that shit in chat. If you're the only one having problems, it's not... It's usually not rip on my end, it's usually rip on your end. Unless, like, I see multiple people saying, like, Hey man, there's an issue, your sound, or something. But if nobody's having any issues, you can't just put in chat that, like, my stream is ripping. Get ourselves into the stand.
literally working fine. Yeah, I know, because you usually, usually know something's broken because chat's just going crazy letting me know that something's not working or something's broken. Alrighty, there we have it. Park brake is on. EPU gens bleeds good. Isolation valve is open. Engine number two is off. Engine number one is off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to Palma de Mallorca. Seatbelt signs are off. Hydro pumps are off. Probe heats are off. Yaw dampers off. Fuel pumps are off. All the lights are off. Seatbelts are off. Good. Wonderful. Great flight. I don't think we got a dance, did we? I'm going to go to GSX. I'm going to request deboarding. There we have it. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. We're going to jump outside. We're going to take a look at the deboarding process. Beautiful. Look at that, chat. Looking real good. Real good in our smart wings airplane. Nice. Great first flight, friends. Very, very good first flight. Let's get some tunes bumping, shall we? Uh, connect ground power? No, we're just going to stay on EPU. All right, cool. Good first flight, my friends. I hope you guys did enjoy that one. Again, if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. Do me a huge solid. Share this channel and share the love of Flight Sim. Uh, let's go and get our return flight plugged in and ready to go. Um, Lipa to LEBB. Good. We're going to be in our 737-800. passengers on the return flight shot. Are we flying tonight? Uh, no, next stream is tomorrow. Doing some Norwegian ops tomorrow. Some red nose. All right, let me pre-file on Vatsim. Good. Cool, sweet. Everything is set there. All right, banner is updated for the return flight. Let's jump inside the aircraft. Let's start working on some things down here. We'll go to the electronic flight bag. We're going to re-import data. Good. You can see we're going Lipa back to Bilbao. Good. Everything is set there. Let's come down here to the aircraft. We'll go to our route tab. We'll do our flight plan request. Lipa to LEBB. We'll insert that. We'll set payload. Good. We'll set fuel. Good. Let's go to our select route. We're going to do our flight plan request. We'll take care of that. A little bit of a longer return flight because we have the headwind, but yeah. You looking forward to flight beams uh, SFO? Absolutely, Carson. Yes, big time, man. Big, 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 big time. Yeah. So you think the 2070 Super is still good for another year? I think you should get another year out of it, Andy. Yes. I don't see you having an issue with that, man. Do you do anything besides this? <laughs> It's a very broad question. What do you mean? Like in my life, in my, in, for streaming, what, what are we talking about? What are we, there's, there's so many, so many ways we could take that, that question. Activate and execute that. Beautiful. Cool. Let's go back to Palma approach. And uh, we'll get our clearance out of there. PMDG 777 United plus SFO flight beam is going to be a great combo. Dude, it's going to be wild, man. It's going to be wild. He sells NBA cards on the side. 
the fuck do you come up with this shit, dude? How? It's <laughs> insane, man. How the hell does somebody even come up with that? He sells NBA cards on the side. <laughs> I'm keeping that one. That's a damn good one. Yes. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> How do you come up with that shit, dude? Like, how is that even a thing? Oh my god. <laughs> 10 out of 10, sir. 10 out of 10. Keeping that one in the bank. I'm, I'm gonna just spit that out there next time somebody says that. I'm gonna be like, what do you do for a living? I sell NBA cards. No big deal. I sell rookie cards. No big deal. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Uh, that was a good laugh, chat. Um, let's see what they want us to do. It, it's given us 2-4 right for the departure, so we'll see what they want. We'll go to unload our flight. We'll import from Simbrief. Good. That's going to be our new flight plan out of here. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to call up Control. We'll let them know we've got ADIS info. Uh, departure ADIS is information Charlie. It, we are departing 2-4 right. So we'll let them know we've got ADIS Charlie. And then we are planning for the drag to Alpha. Home approach, good uh, evening again. Sky travel 2434 with ADIS information, Charlie IFR back to Bilba. Sky travel 2434, hello again. You're clear back to Bilba via Drago to Alpha departure, out of runway 24 right. Initial climb 6000, squawk 6224. I think you said 6224. Sky travel 2434 four, cleared back into Bilbao via the drag 2 Alpha, departure 24 right, initial climb 6000 squawk, I believe you said was 6224. Sky travel 2434, four, back correct, BNH 1024. 1024, thank you, Sky travel 2434. Alright, cool, we've got our clearance. We've got our clearance back, that's great. We'll come down here, let's go to departures. We are going to plan for the uh, Drega 2 Alpha departure out of 2-4 right. Execute that, good. Let's go to our arrivals. Uh, we are planning the Siga 3 Tango arrival. Siga 3 Tango. <clears throat> now, the approaches, ILS Yankee, ILS Zulu. Let's go see. Maybe we can do a cool approach into here. I don't know if they have any cool approaches, but let's see if they do. Uh, ILS Zulu, okay. ILS Yankee, okay. And a VOR approach. M no cool approaches. Sorry, chat. Uh, we're going to take the ILS... E we'll go the ILS Zulu, I guess. ILS Zulu 112. And if I was a betting man, if we look at our arrival... Looks like the arrival is going to take us to, man, this is confusing. Uh, we're on the Sega 3 Tango, so Sega 3 Tango is basically just going to take us like that. We're going to overfly the airport and then we're either, we're going to have to radar vector ourselves, I guess, is what that is, because, yeah. I mean, I guess we just fly the procedural turn. I guess that's what we're going to do. Procedural turn is like that, I'm assuming. Okay. Um, so then I don't know if we want to take it via anything, to be honest with you. Where's BLV? I guess we'd want it via BLV because that's going to be the... Bilbao VOR, which is essentially where we take it from. So we're going to select Bilbao and we'll look and see if it draws a nice approach little pattern in, but it should. We'll execute that. Okay, let's go to our legs page. We'll scroll through, make sure we don't have any crazy discontinuities, which we don't. All right, and then again, before we go anywhere, let's just have a quick little look. Let's go to our flight plan page. Let's have a quick little look and see what things are doing here on the arrival. I mean, that's pretty much as good as I think we're going to get it. That's his procedural turn as I think we'll get, takes us through. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. And then there's the VOR, and then there's the procedural turn. Okay, cool. 
I guess that that is looking good, my friends. Cool. Um, let's go back to the map page. We'll leave you down to five. And uh, that is good. They are done the reboarding process. So I'm going to restart the Kutal script quickly. Do you do anything besides flight simulator in your life? Yes, Riz, I do a lot. Yes. Igor, good to see you, man. Welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Carl Malone, possibly? Ikev, what's going on? Is this the first or second flight? Uh, this is the return flight. So we just did the first flight from uh, Bilbao down to Palma de Mallorca, and then we're going to do the return flight now. Uh, I am going to change the time, though, chat, because I want to do early morning. I want to be able to see both airports. So we'll go early morning, like, just as that sun is set, uh, rising, all right? So we'll go, like, 6.55 a.m. or something like that. 6.55. There we go. We'll clear that out. The sun will just be rising here momentarily, and we'll do that. Uh, let me go to GSX. I'm going to Simbrief OK. Good. It knows we've got 171 passengers, and we'll request boarding. Beautiful. We're going to go Swiss port. Good. Cool. Um, let's go with runway heading 240. Or 237, I guess, would be the runway heading. So we'll bug that up. Good. Um, that's all set. That's all done. Let's go to our knit ref. Let's plug in some numbers. 60.9. Good. We're going 7.6 on the plan. Uh, note crew is already on board. We don't need to board any of them. So it's boarding passengers now. Wants us with a cost index of 54. So we'll go cost index 54, reserves 2. We'll do our perfinite request. We'll send that off. Uh, performance numbers and uh, cruise altitude is looking uh, like um, 30,000 feet, probably dealing with that wind. So time is real. So technically it's always real time. Exactly. Michael, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Crack it on. You got it. Sunset arrival, crack it on. Departure will look good. Simmer Singh, that's a, that's a very silly question to ask any content creator in the community. I can assure you that there's no content creators out here that are using websites like that to download their products. I have a great working relationship with a lot of developers in the community. I also have partnerships with um, Sim Market, Any Builds, Orbex. So no, I don't need to pirate scenery in order to get it. I usually can send a review or request for a review and I, I usually get the, the scenery. Uh, for sceneries that aren't available on any of those other platforms, I usually end up buying the sceneries, unless I can reach out directly to the developer for promotional uh, reasons. Um, no, I, I spend a ton of money on sceneries and, and add-ons and stuff for the simulator, man. I don't want, I, I'm not the type of person to just stand there with his hand out and you know, ask for that stuff, so uh, yeah. Where do these chatters come from? I, I don't know, man. Yep. Marvel into Beast is actually dystopian, too hazy uh, in Sunset. I love landing into, uh, it's another one of my favorite airports and the, the, the scenery is done incredibly well by Any Builds. Any Builds Ibiza is uh, gorgeous if you don't own that one, so. Yeah. You also have morals and ethic. Well, I think it would be really hard to be in the position that I'm in and if I was just over there promoting, pirating websites. Like I say, man, and I, I'll, I'll I'll briefly touch on this again. I cannot control what you do on your computer. <clears throat> I can't control you. I, I, I cannot control what you do and where you get your add-ons. Yes, I know that those websites exist. Yes, I've heard about those websites. Yes, I've been shown those websites. What's actually funny is I've been shown those websites. The first time I ever knew about that website was I was shown by a developer who was upset that his products were being put on that website. Uh, and basically able to download for free by anybody. Um, yeah. It's, uh, I can't control that. The only thing I can control is what happens on my stream and not, not bringing awareness to those types of websites, right? If you don't know about those types of websites, great, good, don't worry about it. If you do know them, that's fine, man. Just keep it to yourself, right? I'm not here to police you. I'm not here to control. I'm not daddy. I'm not, I'm not you know, flight simulator daddy. So I'm not here to control what the hell you do on your own time. If, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you're going to do, man. I ain't, nothing I say is going to stop you from doing that, so that's kind of my outlook on it. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Hope that makes sense. I can only control my channel and what happens here. If you're not daddy, who's daddy? 
what website do you speak of? Yeah, see, so I'm again, I'm not gonna bring awareness to those types of websites. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, all the better. If you do, just keep it to yourself. I'm thinking of grabbing one as I'm not wanting to spend another thousand or two thousand dollars on a rig. What's that, Andy? Oh, for the Series X? It's a very watered down version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So just keep that in mind. You can use it and it is a viable simulator, but it is also a very watered down version of the simulator. You also don't get access to airplanes like the Phoenix airplanes, probably like the fly-by-wire and stuff like that. So, yeah. Captain, you ever flown to Treviso near Venice? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Father Kyle, dad? All this talk of piracy reminds me of the LimeWire days. Yeah. LimeWire was, that was, that was some weird time back then, man, you know? It was some weird, some Napster, you remember Napster and LimeWire? Man. Yeah, so I don't think you have a problem with yours, Andy. Like I said, man, I still think you can get a solid year or two out. I, I wouldn't be worried about buying an Xbox. I don't think you're going to get better Xbox. I think you're going to get better performance on your PC than you would buying an Xbox. Kazaa. Whoa. There were so many of them, man. Napster was like the scratch the surface. If you're stealing scenery, you're a scumbag. A lot of hard work goes into making these products. I mean, listen, like I said, dude, I ain't going to, I have no stance on this matter. Okay. That's, that's just what we're going to leave it at. <laughs> it's obviously, I don't condone it and I don't think that it's right, but I'm also not going to call people scumbags and shit. I'm just not going to go down that road. That's why we just don't talk about it. Right. LimeWire was where all my entire middle school got MP3 songs back in the day. 100%. 100%. Everybody was on LimeWire. Everybody. I still would go and buy the physical CD of the bands that I wanted to support and stuff, right? But I also, when I was on my computer, I also had LimeWire. I would also listen to that same CD that I bought that I would listen on, like, my Walkman or in the car, you know? You guys remember, fuck, fuck, dude, we're old. I remember walking to school with a CD. You remember the CD Walkman? And you had that shit in your pocket? It was literally a brick in your pocket. You'd try and fit it in your pocket. You'd just be jamming your songs, walking down the street. Man, those were the days, Jad. People are spoiled with, like, iPhones and shit now, just putting music onto your iPhones. CD Walkmans, cassette players. I remember getting a cassette player for, like, my 10th birthday. Shit. Had to hold on to it absolutely still while walking. Well, no, you had to get the... If you spent the good money, you got the one with the shock absorb. And it would, like... It was cool. It would... it would You could do almost anything with it. Forget it. It was a Sony? Was it Sony that came out with that one? Can't remember. I think it was a Sony. He had the original Walkman back in the day. Oh, man. Anti-skip CD player with 30 seconds of memory. That's the one. CD Walkmans and tape Walkmans showing our age now. I know, dude. It's brutal. Panasonic and Sony? Okay. The Discman. <laughs> Remember the big... What's the big yellow one, dude? What was the big... Hold on. Yellow portable CD player. It has to be... Like, you guys remember... Oh, fuck. There it is, dude. There it is. The shockwave. I knew it was going to come up. That's that bad bitch. That's that one that I had right there. The Panasonic Shockwave. Dude, stuffing that in your pocket? Oh, baby. Shit. <laughs> Those were the days, man. Those were the days. That got me through middle school. That got me through high school. That's the one, baby. That's the one. I still have one. I'm going to try and find it after stream. Maybe I'll try and bring it on stream tomorrow. I still have one up in my like storage where all my storage stuff is. I don't know if I can find it, but I'm pretty sure I have one. Is that a shockwave or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. Sony with the two headphones jack. Jack was cool. <coughs> Pardon me. Two people could plug it in. I don't know if I ever remember that one. That is pretty neat, though. What year did you graduate high school? Uh, 
looking for my diploma. I don't even... What year did I graduate high school? Great question. I got kicked out of high school initially. In grade... I think it was grade 11? Grade... T yeah, grade 11. Beginning of the year, grade 11. I got kicked out of high school. And then when I got kicked out of high school, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna... I don't want to go to high school. High school's stupid. I don't need high school. And I was like, I'm gonna go work. And I worked for the rest of the year. Like, I went and did, like, hard work labor. Um, so I missed that year. So I was a year behind graduating, like, the rest of, like, my friends that didn't get kicked out of high school. Because I took that year off. I worked for a year, and I was like, nah, fuck that. I don't want to do that. I want to go back to school. I want to have a good job. Um, I don't want to just be like, you know, I was just doing like grunt work and stuff like that, working for minimum wage. And I think minimum wage back then was like seven seventy five or seven sixty five or something like that. Um, no, I went back. I, I, I took that one year off and my ass went right back. Uh, and I graduated. I believe I graduated in, uh, I'm trying to think now. I want to say 2003. I think I'm trying to think how old how old I would have been in 2003 um, yeah I think that's about right two thousand four two thousand five I think have to like confirm but somewhere around there early 2000s I think 2005 maybe 2005 I would have been 17 so I was definitely graduated by like 17 going into 18 so yeah 2005 2004 2005 would have been the one yeah. is there a reason you stream on YouTube and not Twitch so Owen when I first started streaming man um, I'm like I, I was really big into analytics back then Owen I'm not so much into analytics now I just I usually don't care um, and, um, damn, you're almost as old as my dad. Fuck. Dude, that hits way too hard. Stop. Stop. I'm, I'm young. I'm young and spry. Um, I was really into analytics when I first started doing YouTube. And analytically, when I was looking at things, I felt that it would be way too hard to make a name for myself. My... The problem with starting up on Twitch is that it's just so saturated. It even was back then. Back in the day, it was so saturated um, that uh, I just felt it would be very difficult to make a name for myself, and make a brand for myself. How was I going to differentiate between the other 20 or 30 people that were streaming at the same time on Twitch? I always say this, man, and I love to, I love to point this out. If you go over to Twitch right now and you click on, like, the Microsoft Flight Sim, like, the, you know, you go over to Microsoft Flight Sim, like, look at this, dude. I mean, like... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110 Microsoft Flight Simulator live streams. And look at how many people are streaming to less than 10 viewers. 110 streams right now on Twitch. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 90 of 110 streams are streaming to five or less people. How do you make a name for yourself, right? How? It, it's impossible, man. Absolutely impossible to make a name for yourself. So that was one of the major reasons why I decided to stream on YouTube instead of Twitch. It's it's oversaturated on Twitch. Like I said, man, it's impossible to make a name for yourself. It truly is. Um, and when I first started streaming on YouTube, YouTube just started offering. You know, for the longest time, you couldn't live stream on YouTube. Um, YouTube offered started offering a live streaming service. And I started watching a flight simmer by the name of Cat Strader. He used to stream on Twitch and YouTube. Um, and he was one of the main reasons why I, I decided to, I wanted to do YouTube. Uh, I figured if I was one of the first flight sim channels to kind of start streaming on YouTube, that I could also have better success at bringing people into my channel and, and bringing more traffic through the channel. 
and that's that's originally why I decided to to uh, to stream on YouTube and, and not to stream on Twitch. Those are the major reasons. But yeah, like I always tell people now, right? People tell me like, hey Cap, I want to start streaming. How do I get it so that people come and watch my streams? It's like, dude. How do I tell somebody, but also like tell them like, it, it's nearly next to impossible at this rate. At this time, when everybody that has a, a, a 3000 series GPU is trying to stream, it's impossible to tell people like, oh yeah, no problem, man. Like, you'll be a full-time streamer in no time. Like, it's difficult, dude. Even with numbers, even with subscriber counts, you know, it's still difficult, man. You need, you need the memberships. You need the donations. You need the, the sponsorships outside of YouTube. YouTube only provides X amount of dollars every month, right? And to, like, really make this, like, beneficial for you as a content creator, you need those external sponsorships. You need the Thrustmasters, the Innie Builds, the... Um, you know the the toby eye tracker endorsements and so you need those on your channel in order to really make it successful for yourself it's it's very difficult to make not only a name for yourself but to like legitimately make a brand behind what you're doing as well it's even harder man it, it, it it's wild mike thank you for 34 months i appreciate you man huge no floaties to you thank you very very much for supporting the streams incredible man really do appreciate you 34 months, two months away from three years, dude. You're about to get a new upgraded badge. Your uh, your golden maple leaf is about to go to a uh, platinum maple leaf. Two more months, man. Thank you, dude. Hey, Cap, just seen the PMDD showing off the 777 FS weekend. Looks great. Sweet. Very cool. Joe B, what's up, mate? Good to see you, dude. I don't watch Twitch at all anymore. Those ads are crazy. 30-second ads every time I click on a new stream is ridiculous. It's just that's what they have to do now, man. Their revenue revenue is down over on Twitch. A lot of the streamers have left, man. All right, we're ready for push and start. Anti-collision light comes on. Fuel pumps go on. Seatbelt signs are on. We've got our hydro pumps on as well. Good. We'll leave the APUs and bleeds on for now. We'll go to GSX. We're going to prepare for pushback and departure. We're going to turn our sounds up here in the simulator. Sounds up over here as well. Good. Tom, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Dalton, welcome. Uh, Jack, good to see you, man. Welcome aboard. I hope you're doing well. I'll stick to the good old Captain Canada. Twitch is not my thing. No offense to anybody who uses the platform. I don't have any... Like, I, I'm over there all the time, Jay. I don't really have any quarrels with with Twitch. I just... Like I said, man, as a, as a content creator, on a content creator's perspective, next to impossible to... Um, to make a brand for yourself, to make a name for yourself, man. Literally next to impossible. All right, we need to call for push and start. We are at stand 9-2. 9-2. Home approach. Um, sky travel 2434, ready for push and start. Stand 9-2. Sky travel 2434, logging push back. Approve facing east, um, please to alum push back. Push start on to uh, facing east. Sorry, is proof. Smart wings. Sorry, sky travel 2434. Keep calling myself smart wings. They should have just gone with smart wings. Like, why are they called smart wings but then have just as long of a call sign in sky travel? <laughs> Would be worried about doing anything on Twitch. Twitch, I feel like Twitch is going to be. Within the next five years, Twitch is just going to become an, uh, an OnlyFans adult website. That's really the way that I feel that it's going. Um, tail to the... Tail left, nose right, yes. Park brake is on, so we should be able to just remove the chocks. Good. All right, cool. Let's release our park brakes. Good. Wonderful. Packs go off. Isolation valve is open. Sounds go up. Good. Let's start our block time. Run. Good. And engine number two over to ground. Beautiful. They're in financial trouble. The info is out there. I don't I don't doubt it. Look at how many people have left, man. All of the big guys. Tim, Doc. Direct. Everybody. As soon as like XQC and like Kaisenat and all those other guys leave, GG's. GG's. Engine number two, start. I don't get the attention of Twitch at all when YouTube exists. On YouTube, you have the suite of content. 
options, shorts, longs, and lives, but Twitch is just lives. Correct. I think it's just because Twitch has been around forever as the live streams. You know? It used to be travel service. Interesting. XQC did leave. Oh, he is on quick? Oh, uh, kick? So there you go. Writing's on the wall, man. Writing is on the wall, I feel like. When Ninja left, they started to get scared. Who's left? Summit, Shroud, Lyric, Shrummit, Summit, Shroud, Lyric, Kai Sanat, Jinxie, and maybe some of the other. Those are like the big names now. Park break set. Engine number one over the ground. Charlie is now on Thank He still streams on Twitch. He was live two days ago. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe he's both? No, no. Ryanair 4, correction. Ryanair 2 4, Sierra Bravo. After my Julia Victor, clear for a Sulu approach. Runway 2 4 left. Report. Introduce fuel number one. I think the Mark biggest Julia thing, Victor, Marku, Sierra that you need to look at as well is YouTube one, Premium. YouTube Premium is one of the best things that I think I've, I've done as far as like blocking ads and that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Use Brave and ad free browser. Interesting. The advert on uh, YouTube is back as well. Could be watching a video and then it interrupted by an advert that I'm not interested in. Um, yeah, I mean, YouTube has been pushing ads lately, especially on content creators. They've really been pushing us on ads. I have it set right now to like the least minimal amount of ads that they'll allow in a live stream, which I believe is every 30 minutes you have to sit through a skippable ad. That's not the worst if you think about it. Every 30 minutes, every hour, you get two ads or something like that. I, I've seen far worse, but um, yeah. Reggie, my man, five gifted members. Huge no floaties to you, Reg. Thank you for the support, dude. I appreciate you. That is incredibly kind, dude. Chat, you know what we forgot? To do our performance stuff. Whoopsies. Um, departing 2 4 right. Aircraft, weather. Calculate. Good. 51 on the cell temp. Good. Take off. Flaps 5 degrees. CG weight 25.7. And V speeds 42, 44, 48. 42, 44, 48. Beautiful. All matching in there. Good. Cool. How much is YouTube premium? I believe it's $10 a month. Pro Beats on. Yacht Amper's on. Gen 1 is on. If you bleed comes off, packs back to auto. Isolation valve to auto. We're going to 30,000 feet today, so we'll bug up 30,000. If you goes off, start switches over to continuous. Um, landing elevation is in Bilbao 136. So we'll set 150 on that guy. Uh, good. Auto brakes over to RTO. Flaps are set position number five. I'll re sync our flight directors. Auto throttle, VNAV, LNAV, initial climb was flight level, sorry, not flight level, 6,000 feet, and our V-speed 148. Good, We're ready to taxi. Hello approach, uh, Sky Travel 2434, ready to taxi, 24 right. Sky Travel 2434, taxi, Lina, Juliet, link north, behind Boeing 738 of Europa Colors. Holding point 24 right, um, also if you wish, November 1, suppose. I did not get the end of that. All right, Lima, Juliet, Link, uh, North uh, for holding point two four right. Sky travel two four three four. I think YouTube went downhill with adverts since Google took over it years ago. I don't really think so, man. Like I said, dude, if 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 a thirty second ad every thirty minutes is is too big of an issue, like I said, dude, get YouTube Premium. That's the easiest way to resolve that. I think it's $10 a month. 
With YouTube Premium, for me personally, it's replaced my Spotify. It, it literally is the same as Spotify. So I got rid of my Spotify account for $12 a month and I got YouTube Premium for $10 a month. I get all my music and I get everything now through my, my YouTube app on my phone. Works the exact same way that my, uh, my, my music, other music apps worked and now I don't have ads on YouTube. I've, I haven't seen an ad on YouTube since I got Premium. I'd, I'd take that all day long. All day long. I'll take a 30 second ad on YouTube every 30 minutes over a three minute mid roll on Twitch every 20 minutes, 100%. The thing that gets me about Twitch too is every time you click on a different channel, you're just constantly getting ads restarting over and over, it's wild. But yeah, listen, to each their own, man, to each their own. I get it, ads are not, I'm not saying that ads are good, but you also have to understand as a content creator, from my point of view, we need ads to also increase our revenue monthly, right? So you have to think about it from that way. I get it. Trust me, they're not fun. And that's why, like I said, I try and minimize it. There's other YouTube channels, man. Every every 12 minutes they put an ad. Do you know what I mean? So um, the fact that I have a, a, a skippable 15 second my ad every 30 minutes, I'm doing my best to kind of keep it uh, keep it as, as tame as possible he gave us okay Lima Juliet to link five to north no it's not always set uh, but when do you think you'll be back flying in Texas oh I don't know maybe next week when we're back in the US we can do somewhere in and out of there problem with Texas is like I mean we could do some Dallas love we're already back in the E300 next week doing some cargo ops so maybe maybe we'll see if we can do some some cargo into uh, Dallas or something I'm following that guy so I'm just going to go out this way Lima Kilo and then we'll make a left we're just following that Air Europa up in front of us once I went to YouTube Premium, I could never go back. I personally think it's worth it. I know that we live in a world of, uh, of subscriptions nowadays. I personally think if there was one thing now, again, I spend a lot of time on YouTube, so maybe I'm not quite thinking the way that a, a, you know, an average YouTube person would think about it, but for me, um, I, uh, I think it's very much worth it. Boeing 78 Sierra Bravo uh, after Boeing 738 passing right to left on link, continue taxi link north holding point to right. If your engine came 25th on the Top Gun Sidewinder section, it's really hard. I recommend it to everyone. Nice. After the Boeing can side. Uh, YouTube Premium in Canada is $11.99 per month or $120 yearly. Yes. And that's worth every penny, in my opinion. Every penny. There's that fueling aircraft. I think he flew down with us as well. Right now, 378 to leave my space. What I'm trying to do to do the simulate, yeah. Lubbock, Texas is the FedEx UPS hub. Okay. We'll have to see if there's any scenery for that. KLBB. I'm going to search for that right now. KLBB Airport Scenery MSFS. Do we have anything? We have. Fly too high. Lubbock Preston. KLBB. Is this the one we're talking of? I have this scenery, don't I? I feel like I have this scenery. Fly too high, Lubbock. Okay. Well, if I don't, I can definitely get it if it's on any builds. There we go there. Yeah, hey, BK Jax, I don't know if you remember, it's been a minute since I've been on stream. Um, did you change your name? Artie? I think I have that series, but I'll, I'll take a look at that. Thanks for the suggestion. Kind of stuck on the Phoenix right now. B2 really makes it a lot better. It is fun. Yeah, I do agree, man. We flew it for two weeks, so I got to jump in something else. Got to go fly something else for two weeks, but don't you worry. We'll be back in the Phoenix, man. We will be back.
Got you, Tom. I wonder if it's just the way that they're doing the object LOD right, or something. Zero, Bravo, wing, almost column, track we do for left, Cleveland. Cleveland, two for left, final, two for zero, Ryanair 2505 ready for taxi. Would you prefer Boeing or Airbus? I like them both. I don't really have a preference, to be honest with you. I enjoy them both the same, my friend. You see the trailer from Fly By Wire? I did, Ozzy. We watched it together, actually. We watched it together. It was our in-flight entertainment on the way uh, on the way down to uh, on the way down to Palma de Mallorca. Cap, you did the 700 the other day. Maybe a little love to the 900 before the E300. Um, maybe the 900 isn't really flown around here. I don't know if we will. Tomorrow we're doing Norwegian ops. They only have the 800. I don't think we can get the 900 in this week. We get the 900 in far more than we get the 700, though. So, yeah, we dusted off the... We hadn't flown the 700 in forever. Felt good to jump into the 700. We have about two, three, Victor Hotel, wing contact with two, four, right, lift for takeoff. Lift for takeoff, here you for your 23 Victor Hotel. <coughs> GR 3000. 234 behind, uh, call Boeing 738 of Europa, you're taking off, line up and wait, 248 behind. 248, line up and wait, behind, Sky Travel 2434. Alright, there we go, behind, landing lights on, runway turnoffs on, strobe lights on, wing lights on. Good, ding the cabin. Good. The 600's a rocket? Yeah, it's unfortunate that nobody flies the 600 any longer. It's a little bit unfortunate, but... What track IR do I use? I use the Toby Eye Tracker, uh, which, funny enough, it's called the Toby Eye Tracker, but it also just can track your head movement. As so you can see, my hotel eyes are not being shown right now, but it is still tracking my head, looking down, up, left, and right. Um, really, really, really cool tool, man. Especially if you're using, like, flying, like, VFR or, like, GA or anything like that. Like, being able to make, like, small movements and, like, turn your head. Oh, I'm still looking dead center of the screen, but I'm also <clears throat> able to move my head and look around. It it's, uh, really is a game changer, if I'm being honest with you. It's as close as, like, going in VR without, like, actually wearing a VR headset. The fact that you can tune it. And you can set it up however you'd like. Another thing that I really love about it is the customizability. The way that you can change things. You can make it so, like, you can move your head, like, that much. And it'll, you know, you can do a 90 degree left turn or something like that. Why are you actually wearing sunglasses? Well, if I have to explain it, I always go by this motto. If I have to explain it to you, you're probably not going to understand anyways. So, yeah. That, that's kind of the, kind of the outlook that we have. If you can't figure out why I'm dressed the way that I'm dressed wearing sunglasses, probably not worth okay, my time to explain. 234, confirm is Quark 6224. Should be set now, thank you. Sky Travel 2434. Sky Travel 2434, thank you. Wind calm, I'm going to 24 right, please. 24 cleared for takeoff, Sky Travel 2434. Two actions has a 15% discount right now. There you go. Now's the time. Sounds up, chat. Let's get the hell out of here. Throttles, 240%. Uh, behind the departure traffic, let's go to full right behind fueling 7870. I'm pulling 780. Chronos on. Toga. Slate nose down pressure on the stick. Uh, 6263, we will change this right now. Take off power set. Clive. Thank you. 80 knots. Neutral. Positive rate of climb. 
You're up. Level two four zero, sky travel two four three four. All right, two four zero on the altitude. Good. And speed checks, flaps one. Auto brake can go off, gear is locked. Why don't we turn off some taxi lights are off? Look at that climb out over the port area. I love coming and landing on this side as well because you have the port over there. It's really cool. Really cool. 210, flaps clean. Behind the departing traffic, boarding, uh, line up runway, two for right behind the uh, runner 25. And coming up on 5,000 feet, straight out departure, autopilot one is on, back up into the flight deck, and we will get a nice wing view. Those engines screaming away. Why is the gear down, up, locked? It's the way that it works on the 737. So you have the gear up, as soon as gear up, you put it in the lock position. I believe it cuts the hydraulics to the gear, I think, or something to do with that. Locks the hydraulics. Any comments on all the Boeing incidents lately? No. I'm here doing flight sim, man. I'm not, uh, not doing the real world stuff. I'm not a real world pilot, not flying Boeings in real life. So my opinion and matter on the, uh, means, means nothing. Uh, Mike, it should do it automatically, man. It should do it automatically. To, to make sure that it's working, once you load into the simulator, check down here, you should see it right here. This is real cat turb. One this little program right here. It should say connected to MSFS. If it's not, I would uninstall real cat turb and reinstall it. Because it definitely should be finding it by itself. Uh, direct to uh, Standard barometric pressure. Look at that. Yeah, there's no like actual menu for it. You just like, if you ever need to switch any of the variables, you just right click it and you go when settings two, four, Sierra, Bravo, flight, and then it pops Security this up. And then you can. Uh, you can kind of balance things by there. I have it set to default. This is all default. Okay, it's for takeoff. Runway 24 right, runway 24 right, runway 24 right. And these are, yeah, default settings. Although I might bump up the cloud turbulence. We'll see if anybody has any issues with that but the only thing I did was turbulent sound turn it to off zero is off one is set to just turn it off Microsoft said on the dev stream that the airliners for 2024 will be payware quality do you think that they're slowly taking over the payware plane market I mean it would be smart of them they have the money they have the resources you know uh, it would be smart of them if they did but who knows who really knows um, okay, we're looking good. We're pressurizing. Everything's set. Landing lights are off. Wing lights are off. Good. We'll put the seatbelt signs to the auto. Pretty smooth air out here, actually. Get seatbelt signs to auto as well. Good. 
You ever had a rejected takeoff? I don't think so. No. Is Real Cat Turb free? No, it's an add-on payware. Very fairly priced. You can put exclamation point uh, RT in chat and Nightbot will provide you with a link directly to it. It's, it's fairly well priced. Which Miami do I use? The new one that just came out. I believe it's the BM AM Sim World. BM Sim AM World. That's the one. Ryanair 25 to the 5 radar contact. Client flight level 240. Flight yeah, question direct. on the resolution of stream. Do you have you ever run Microsoft on the same resolution as you would stream, or if you run 4K, then you have to stream it lower, like on full HD? Uh, well, Bear, it depends on the PC that you're using. Obviously, the higher resolution through OBS is going to be the higher affected. If you have a dedicated stream PC like I do with a capture card, I would have no problem streaming 4K. But yeah, it really depends on the components that you have. A lot of the time what you see is people will have a 4K monitor and then they'll downscale it to like 2K or 1920 by 1080 for streaming purposes just because it's easier on the encoder and the software. So it really depends. It really depends what, what type of setup you have. I was going to let BFR thinking it was my only options kind of bat. Uh, it, it's not the best. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. I would definitely say, like, texture-wise and visually, the BMAM world is, uh, is definitely better. Performance-wise, they're both not the best. I think that just has something to do with Miami, but... Uh. It's been a week since I've been able to fly my flight sim. Starting to feel the effects of my addiction. Three, Victor, hotel, monitor, Unicorn, one, two, two, nice. Decimalite, yeah. Okay, one, two, Decimal, eight, uh, Chow, Air Euphoria, 23, Victor, Hotel, thanks for ATC. Welcome, bye bye. Lot eight, Victor, Romeo, Agenda Breeze, Radar, contact, continue, Lotus, one, pop, arrival. I'll buy the Toby Eye Tracker right now. Enjoy it, man. It's, uh, it is really nice. As somebody that was going from using um, the head tracker, which I had to have like a camera mounted on top of my monitor, and then I also had to wear this thing that hung off my headset, and it's kind of limited like what headset I was able to buy and stuff like that as well. Uh, it's been nice. It's been nice not uh, to not have to wear anything on my headset, not have a camera. The way that the camera system, it actually mounts on the bottom of your monitor, so it's really nice. It's really nice. You don't really notice it. It kind of just sits on the bottom of your monitor. It's not all up top, like in your view range and stuff. I, I enjoy it. Any interest in train sims? No, unfortunately not. Don't tell Mopar. Don't tell Schmitty. <coughs> no, no real interest in train sims, man. I've never been, uh, never been a train guy. Never been a foamer. I don't know why. Trains are cool. I, I, I'm not saying that trains aren't cool, but I just... It's one of those things that doesn't tickle my fancy, you know? Nerd. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Just doesn't do it for me. Is it good to use for all types of games like COD? Um, I've, I've never tried it in Call of Duty, Bauer. I don't know if it works in Call of Duty. Uh, I know that it works in like train sim, flight sim, truck sim, like that's where it really, in my opinion, like that's how you, you know, you can really use it to get immersed. I'm sure there's a whole list of games you can get it to work for, but yeah. Once you go Toby, you don't, don't, don't track. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. If I may ask, you also have another job besides YouTube. I don't. No. YouTube is my, uh, my sole income. I don't live a very crazy, expensive, lavish lifestyle duro. So, uh, I don't make a ton of money doing this. Like, I'm not rich by any means, if that's what you're... I live a very comfortable life, if that's what you're asking. I don't have tens of thousands of, of dollars in the bank stuff, stuffed away, but I, uh, this... One, three, four, three, wind doing this has allowed me to, 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 to have a very nice life and, and to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, to do some things. I, I'm, I'm investing... I'm investing my money wisely, is what I like to say. Buying property, that type of thing. Investing in my future so that in 
20, 30 years from now, if YouTube's not a thing, streaming's not a thing, I'll at least have property that I can sell, look back on, whatever it may be, right? What about the NBA cards? Yes, true. Okay, travel two four three four. Monitor Unicom one two two decimal eight. Yeah. Over to Unicom one two two decimal eight. Sky travel two four three four. Thanks for the ATC. Come bye bye. All right, over to Unicom. Great to have ATC, man. I wasn't expecting us to get full. We had full ATC basically on the way down. There's two three zero. We're gonna climb up to our cruise altitude, which is thirty thousand feet. So we'll bug up flight level three zero zero. There we go. I'm still jealous. Very fun to have as a job for short. Hey, man, listen, I'm, trust me, when I say that, I'm not telling people, like, I need more, but that's not what I'm getting at. I'm, I'm just saying that I think you have to be a realist, and I think it, it really comes down to, one, what your expenses are in life. Like, I don't, like I said, I don't really, I don't really live, like, a very lavish lifestyle. I, you know, I stream a lot. I'm, I'm here from home. I... I, I invest the money that I do make instead of just like having money sitting in a bank I invest the money that I do make doing this because like I said who knows man who knows if streaming will even be a thing in 10 years from now 15 years you don't know I don't think streaming is going anywhere I think streaming is always it's just going to become more viable as as there's more people that are drawn to that live content and stuff like that but I'm just saying who knows right who knows there could be laws that become a thing and you have no clue. You have no clue what's going to happen. This is one of the, the scary things about, like, you know, living on YouTube and, and, and doing the whole YouTube thing. And you have no clue. You know, you, you really don't know. So uh, who knows, man? Who knows where this is going to lead, right? I mean, <clears throat> you look at you look at Chewy, right? I'm just going to use Chewy because he's a good friend of, of the channel, good friend of mine. I've been a huge supporter of him well before I was streaming. This guy streamed for like 10 years plus, right? Like stream and was like a big, uh, you know, a big uh, name in the flight sim industry. And he still is, but he was able to take that. And now he has a job with Microsoft where he's got security. And I'm, I guarantee you he's getting paid a, a pretty decent dollar as well, right? Where like you're working at Microsoft now. You're not really a streamer. You're, you're, you're an employee of Microsoft, like, right? So who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows in five years from now, ten years from now, <clears throat> some opportunity like that may open up for me down the road, or and and that be that may be where I see my career going. As far as okay, now I want to go do this for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Who knows, right? You have to keep you have to keep your options open, right? That's what what I'm trying to say is, you have to be viable. You, who knows, man? Would I love to be streaming in five, 10, 15 years from now? Of course, absolutely. <clears throat> I love this. I love the interaction that I have with the community. I love people razzing me and kind of like making me be a better pilot. I love that aspect of it. I, it used to make me, I guess it's maybe it's because like I'm a performer at heart. I don't know, right? I don't know what, why I feel that way, but I feel that there's, you know, like I've always said this before. I feel as a content creator and somebody that makes money and makes a living doing this, I feel that I have to I have to be good at this, right? I have to be good at what I'm doing. Otherwise, there doesn't, there's not much purpose for you guys being here other than, you know, just hanging out and stuff like that. But, you know, same goes for like sponsorships and stuff like that, right? Like you want to be, you want to promote the best that you can promote. And that's why you get external sponsors that help the channel and make things easier and stuff like that, right? So, yeah, I don't know. If Microsoft offered you a job, would you take it? I don't know if I would take it at this point, to be honest with you, man. I think that I'm still, um, I'm still very much, like I said, in love with the idea of like live streaming and um, content creation and, and that interaction with people. And um, that, that's one thing that I think really keeps me going is just building um, the relationship with the community and just having such a great group of people to to hang out with week in and week out. Yeah, there's there's always idiots, right? There's always idiots that are going to come by and there's always people that are going to judge you and there's always people that think they should be where you are and you're not a good pilot and you're you're not this and you're not that. That's just normal, man. That's the way life goes. It's 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 more so about the the people that want to be here and the people that want to share your passion and and be in the community. That's what I'm more interested in. So, yeah. Uh, I missed a question. Somebody put a, a, a big question. There says, "Hey Cap, uh, have you had an issue with the Boeing Quadrant, mainly the spoilers? I have a problem with the lever being in the middle, 
which sets the spoilers to not fully extended. Uh, Poppy, try and do some calibration to it or something. Something tells me like you, you might not have it calibrated properly. Yeah. Um, what does Chewie do for Microsoft? I believe he's a community manager. So he manages the, the, like what happens between Microsoft and like the community. So all of these community fly-ins, <clears throat> but you'd have to speak with him. He'll be down at Flight Sim Expo. I was just in his stream the other day. Um, he will be down at Flight Sim Expo. So if you really want to know, you'll have to ask him directly, but I believe his official title is community manager. Now, what exactly that entails, you'd have to speak with him about that, but I think that that's what it is. Are you part of a virtual airline? Uh, I am not. I used to be part of Virtual Southwest, Virtual Delta, and Virtual Air Canada. Um, but I have since left since I've been a streamer. It's just too difficult to keep up and to keep making sure I'm doing flights for them and stuff like that. It's just too much. You always got welding to fall back on if things don't work out, uh, if you're level-headed. Uh, of course, yeah. I mean, at this rate, flight simulation experience with the, you know, again, not gloating, not... With the amount of members that we have on the channel now and the amount of support that we have, I mean, just members alone, I have enough to pay my bills every month, right? And again, please don't take this the wrong way. I'm just trying to explain to you from my perspective. Ever since, and I, I've spoke about this earlier last week, and I think, yeah, last week we spoke about it. YouTube allowing memberships has completely changed the game, man. Because if you think about it, if somebody were to donate, let's say $50, whatever, every stream or something like that, that's a lot of money, right? But if you can get, let's say, 3,000 people at $5 a month, which a lot of people can afford, right? If you have a job, if you, $5 a month, if you think about on a subscription basis, that's kind of nothing, right? So you get 3,000 people at $5 a month, well, I mean, you do the math, man. YouTube takes 30% of that. I get 70% of that. So for every $5 that's donated, I get $3 and change times that by 3,000. Simple math, right? So, I mean, that's where, for me, again, I don't necessarily have to worry about, like, donations and stuff like that. And then you add sponsorships in. Not saying that I don't require donations for the channel to succeed Happy Saturday, obviously Captain. they do haven't had much time to watch lately due to but. preparing for my interview with a large u.s legacy carrier earlier this week Ooh. but now that it's over i got it cool hey, face i will have nice, time man lone sparrow huge no floaties to you dude <clears throat> drop in the ten dollar donation huge no floaties to you man thank you for the support i really do appreciate you man incredibly kind thank you thank you thank you dude that's that uh, that's uh very kind and congratulations man Congratulations on your uh, interview. A large U.S. legacy carrier. Delta, United, American, one of those, right? That's a legacy, I believe. Regardless, congratulations, my friend. All the best to you, dude. Thank you for your continued support of the channel. Thank you, my friend. When did YouTube... Uh, Will said... Sorry, what was that, Will? When did YouTube... Um, put in memberships? Um... It's, it hasn't been that long. I feel like it's maybe maybe we're at like two years. Well, no. Hold on. No, it has been a while. It has been a while because Dan's been a member for like five years. So it has been a while, but I just think that they gained... Um, what they did is gifting members. Gifting memberships uh, has only been a thing over the last like year and a little bit. Maybe two years. Year and a half. Memberships have been in, <clears throat> pardon me, memberships have been in for a while. Gifting memberships and, and being able to like transfer somebody a membership, that hasn't, that's new. And that's where it's been a whole new experience, right? That's why you see, because I don't think it's 3,000 individual people. A lot of them are gifted, right? Shit, we had a hundred and, what was it, 169, 159 gifted members the other day, so, Yeah. When the 380 and 777 come out, how often do you see yourself flying them since they're long hauls? Will we still be a 320 and 7.3? I think we're going to have a nice balance of both, Kestadon. We'll do a nice balance, dude. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, we're going to see a lot more long hauls on the channel, obviously. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes. If we're going to be doing 10-hour flights, I don't think that we'll have a stream on Saturday, Sunday, though. You know, the way that we usually do now, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. What I see happening is probably a, a, a 7 to 10 hour flight on Saturday, 
no stream Sunday as we recuperate from the big stream that we had and then maybe back with a stream on Monday, another shorter long haul or something. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll have to kind of, we'll have to figure it out. I think what you're also going to see is you're going to see me probably flying a lot of more, maybe we'll fly the A320 and the 737 during the week. So Thursday and Monday, we'll be in like an A320 or a 737. And on the weekend, we'll do like a 10 hour long haul or something like that. That's probably what's going to happen as well. So there might be a nice little shift in kind of seeing me fly more than one aircraft a week because it is as it stands right now I really only tend to fly like one maybe two three variants of the aircraft right we flew the 800 and the 700 this week so um yeah triple seven will be good hopefully yeah absolutely gifting members definitely is a game changer for sure absolutely absolutely what's your opinions on pmdg triple seven I'm excited for it man other than that I don't really don't really have an opinion other than I'm, I'm excited for it. I hope it's going to be good, you know. Do you plan on hopping to X-Plane 12 for a stream once the Flight Factor 777 V2 releases? No. Uh, Aaron, I can already, again, not, not trying to be rude, not throwing any shade here at anybody, but I can, if I had to choose between the PMDG 777 and the Flight Factor 777, 10 out of 10, 100% every time. I'm choosing the PMDG 777 over the Flight Factor 777. I I don't really have any pull or, or say in the X-Plane world anymore. I've been removed probably for about three years from the X-Plane world, so I don't have a lot of uh, developers that are all that happy with me, which means that I would have to pay for both airplanes, which would probably end up being <clears throat> $200-$250. No, that's not going to happen, man. That is not going to happen. I will be flying the PMDG 777. I'm, I'm, would not be worth it for me to go back into X-Plane. Not only to spend $100 on an airplane, but to get X-Plane right up and running and... Nah. Daniel, what's up, mate? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. All right, Cap, got to head out. Sadly, it's 8 p.m. I got to work at 3 a.m. tomorrow. Catch you later. Oof, Ozzy. Take care, mate. Have a great uh, evening, dude, and have a great shift tomorrow. All the best. Wonder when we'll get the A220? I don't know. Those guys have been awfully quiet. Obviously, we got the news that a couple months ago they have partnered with Anybuilds to give us a payware product, a payware model of the product. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would, uh, I would really, uh, really be curious to see. I, I'm hoping that we get it sooner than later. Now that they're working with Anybuilds, things should really start to, you know, start coming along. Anybuilds is just insanely talented, man. The developers that they have over there, I've been lucky enough to like become friends with a couple of their texture guys and some of the system and the modeling guys and like, dude, some of the work that these guys do, I, I, it's just, it literally blows my mind. Like, it, it's incredible, the programs that they use, the things that they use to, to bring these things to life. It's just, it, it's absolutely bananas. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm very excited for the E220 and I hope that it comes sooner than later. Hopefully, maybe by the end of summer, one would think. I don't know. We'll see. Some people have said that the cockpit modeling of the 777 looked cartoonish. I don't understand what they mean. I think maybe that it's just, like, too new. There's no, like, it's no wear and... I don't know, dude. People will always... I don't understand this whole thing. People always constantly talking about things looking cartoonish or doing this. I, it's flight sim, man. Like, I don't... You know, I, I, I don't know. I think some people are just, they love to hate to hate. I think that's really what it comes down to. Textures look flat, that's what they meant. I don't know. Again, man, we're, we're, you know, the product's not released. I have zero issues with the way that the, the 737 looks, especially with the wear and tear, which they said that they... I guess the test airplane that they're going off of was a 12-year-old 777. That's like the aircraft that they had access to when doing texturing and modeling and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, dude. I have zero issues with the way that this aircraft looks. I'm assuming that I'm going to have zero issues with the way that the 777 looks. I don't know. That's just me. Again, everybody to each their own. I don't know. Rob agreed with the flat textures on the PMGG forum. He said the cockpit is painted with highly unreflective paint. 
interesting. So there you go. It's, maybe it's a thing. I don't know. Someone will eventually come up with a wear and tear texture pack just like they did for the 7.3. 100% agree with you on that one as well. Absolutely. And that's what we'll all use. <laughs> PMD always have great textures. Picking a video just before the release is ridiculous. Just look at the 7.3. It's amazing. I, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Like I said, I don't... I don't They've never lead. They've never led me to believe that it wouldn't be, the textures wouldn't be good. So I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that now, right? Does that make sense? PMDG did emphasize that they would work on texturing wear and tear on the triple seven uh, in one of Rob's forum posts. There you go. Microsoft have given such a great sim for graphic. I am sure we will uh, have add-ons for cockpit textures for those people. Of course. Some people can't be happy with anything in FSX P3D days. PMDG would never model the cabin, uh, so be thankful. True. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, I understand, dude, like, <laughs> other than, like, the initial time that you buy an airplane, and, like, maybe you're like, oh, what does this look like? Remember, this door doesn't open, and he was like, oh, wow, like, are you fucking doing this every single flight? What are you doing? You're walking up and down the virtual cabin every single flight you're doing this? Like, no, man, this is something that you do, like once it's the same as like the airplane interiors or the the airport interiors like what are you doing you getting off your plane and are you pretending you're a person and you're walking off your plane into the terminal and you want to be able to see fucking restaurants and bathrooms and shit like that like what like come on it's ridiculous i am there's no way you're doing this every flight y'all are trolling man there is no way that you do this shit every single flight. Like what, you just walk up and down your virtual cabin? Like, come on, man. This is fucking the least of the worries of things that you need to be worried about. Literally the least of the worries. Can I have a can I have a custom wing view? Yeah? Cool. All that matters. Thank you. That's all you need. You don't need the seats. Is it a nice gesture? Sure, fine. But like, I don't believe a single person when they, when you tell me every single flight, you walk up and down your virtual cabin, hee hee hee, look at my airplane, it's so nice. <laughs> There's no way, dude. There's absolutely no way people do this every flight. Although, you know what, people are fucking weird, so maybe, but still, I, I don't believe it, man. I don't believe it. I, just, I refuse to believe it. Like, what? Like, it's just so weird, dude. Like, go sit in the cockpit, man. Look at all the buttons and look at all the shit you get to play with up here. Just sit in here, man. Look, play with all these buttons. Look, turn this off, turn this on. Ooh, look. Ooh, ooh. Open that one. Close that one. Mmm. Hit this. Hit the seatbelt sign. Look, you got all kinds of things to play with up here. Like, what the hell? Never understood that, man. Same as the airport interiors. You have people that literally give developers shit. They'll be like, great scenery, but the inside isn't modeled. Minus five points. Like, bro, what? What are you doing? Your flight sim, man. Like, what, you walking through the airport after you land your airplane? I will never, ever, ever. It's one of those things that truly puzzles me. <clears throat> the great puzzles of life, chat. The great puzzles of life. I have... Blows my mind, man. Blows my mind. Toilets, toilet doesn't flush 5 out of 10 at best. It's wild, man. It just blows... Like, it just... It, again, I, it just doesn't make sense to me how, like, people would get upset that these things aren't modeled. It's like, why? Like, you realize this is just more polygons. This is just more... This, this will affect performance in the long run. No matter what, you're, you're drawing more... The aircraft has to draw in more shapes, polygons. I don't know. Some people will start modeling humans to walk on the virtual airplane for 10 minutes before a pushback. We all have our thing. I mean, again, that one I kind of understand because, like, that's little... It, it's more of, like, a visual aspect, right? You're watching boarding process. It's, it adds to the realism. I guess one could argue having a cabin also adds to the realism, but I just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It seems like a very, like, I don't even know. I don't, I, I don't get it, clearly. <laughs> clearly, I don't get it. I go sit in 69F every flight for a solid 20 minutes. That's what I mean, though. Like, as long as I can do a wing view, like, that's all that matters, you know? 
Some people will, uh, imagination can run wild, you know? I mean, I guess so. I guess so, but... Maybe it's not so much of a modeling, it's more uh, of trying to get close as possible to the real world. Uh, there's no shame in that. I, again, I'm not, but for people to get upset, that's what I'm getting at. I don't care if a developer wants to include it or not include it. What I'm saying is I don't understand how people get upset. Some people will not buy scenery because the interiors aren't modeled. Or some people won't buy an airplane because the cabin's not modeled. And it's like, guys, come on. Like, we're not doing anything back here. There's, is it visually nice to look at? Okay, sure, yes. And that's about it. How many times do you go, and that's what I was asking, how many times do you go actually walk up and down the cabin for a cabin tour of looking at, like, the seats and, oh, wow, nothing's changed since the first time I did this. Right? That's m more so what I'm getting at. Latin VFR planes? <laughs> Should have come to FS Weekend. Maybe next year, uh, Pilot Triss. Maybe next year. We'll see. I'd love to do it. It'd be kind of fun, but... Cap, what's your favorite plane of all flight simulators in the airline? Don't have a favorite airline. I would honestly say that, in my opinion, the best that I've flown is probably the Phoenix A320. There's arguably a couple other... There's some great planes as well. Fly J Sim Q400, the Zebo Mod... The 757 by Flight Factor, uh, the PMDG 73, uh, I'm sure FS Labs A320, PMDG 777, and P3D, all those airplanes are fantastic as well. But for what I've flown, I think the best product has been the Phoenix A320. Convince Thrustmaster to send you? Well, so the way that it works with Thrustmaster, Will, is there's Thrustmaster North America, and then there's like the European side of Thrustmaster. So I think the European side of Thrustmaster probably brought their guys and just like on the North American side of things like Flight Sim Expo Thrustmaster brings me so I think that's how it's dealt with there's like Thrustmaster EU and then Thrustmaster North America so I believe that's what's going on I don't think like any of the guys that I would go down with or yeah I don't think that's how it works I think that they're they have their own you know uh, but maybe it could be something that I could talk to them about and see if they would be interested in Maybe they would, they, they would, you know, do that. I don't know. Um, many people who are in this community cannot become an IRL pilot for various reasons, so every aspect that adds to the realism will probably be welcome with open arms, even for the smallest of details. I can, I can agree with you on that one, Aaron. I, I definitely can. Um, I don't think that's going to change my... I mean, it, it is a great perspective, trust me. It's a great perspective. It, it does bring things into perspective as to why somebody would want a cabin modeled or something like that but yeah I don't know for me like I said man for for resources sake and for just I don't know like I said as long as I can set a wing view and do this that's really all I would care about that's realism enough for me to see the engine the wing the flaps the spoilers you know that's enough that, that's enough for me I don't I don't need to pretend I'm walking up and down you know, an airplane. But again, that's me, and you're right. That's just my opinion, and everybody's going to have a difference of opinion. To me, it's just, it, I, I can't see how, like, somebody would rate a product based on whether they could walk up and down the cabin like that, you know? But I do hear what you're saying. I, I do, and it does bring perspective into it. Do you know FS Labs is keeping the lights on? Their only products are for P3D. We all know that P3D planes aren't selling anymore. Um, flight or one thing that you have to learn about flight sim, um, the way that flight sim hobbies go, a lot of these developers, this isn't a full-time thing for them. A lot of flight sim developers, it's like a, it's a weekend thing. It's a, it's a, it, it, it's a part-time when they have time in the evenings, after dinner, on the weekends, when they're not out doing things. A lot of developers are, um, part-time and doing it when they can. So that's how they keep the lights on. Most of them have a full-time job that they make good money at, and then they do the flight sim on the side, kind of like gravy money, you know? How can your sim look so extremely good? I just have it set to the high-end preset. I don't know, man. How spoiled are we? I remember feeling absolutely amazed by flying a 737 2D Cockman on PC 20 years ago. Ah, Jared, it's... 
when you think about how far and how fast these simulators have transpired, it's insane, man. Even the last five years, dude, if you would go back five years and you would show somebody Microsoft Flight Simulator two years prior to its original release, I think people would have been like, nah, this is some, like, you did something, this is just, like, some, like, picture or something, you know? I don't think anybody would have believed you that this is what we would have been doing. So, fuck, you only imagine going back 20 years, dude. Like you said, 2D, 2D panels landing in FS 2004. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, I agree. Gotta love going into the uh, Boeing business jet and take uh, a fake shower. <laughs> is it even modeled? I bet you it is, actually, isn't it? That's too funny. That is too funny. Ooh, my buddy caught a beluga arrival. Let's see if I can put that up on YouTube. <clears throat> Went from FS98 to 2000 to FSX <coughs> to Microsoft. It's come a damn long way indeed. It really has, man. Mm-hmm. It really, really has. I've seen on YouTube that's been posting uh, videos of FS9. His name is still flying FS2004. Nice. I think I saw one of his videos, actually, Tom. I think one of those videos came up on my recommended, and I watched it, and I had a good laugh. He was flying like some default plane. It was 2D panel. Yeah. Why not fly to Prague? Sim wings, uh, sorry, smart wings are based there. Um, because this is a real world smart wings flight. They also do this flight in the real world. There's the proof in the pudding right, right there, my friend. Smart wings 2434 from Palma de Mallorca to Bilbao. That is the real world flight, my friend. So, yeah. I mean, we might as well just do it here as we're doing it in Prague as well. No real issues there, my friend. Should have been serving your passengers coffee during cruise. I'm getting very upset. Man, went from FS 2004 to FS 2020. 2D panels to full real life everything. Pretty nuts to think about it still. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sean, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. Welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Um... In the old Microsoft, the whole world was not modeled, only small sections of the world. Uh, was it? I thought it was all still modeled. Couldn't you do that? I'm pretty sure. I thought so. You speak the truth, Captain. Really beautiful to hear your thoughts uh, aloud. You make me realize how far we've come. It's pretty crazy, man. It is pretty crazy. Uh, we've got... Madrid control back online, so that's good. We'll get ETC back in one three two decimal nine eight. Bug that up, and we're showing fifty four miles till top of descent. Chat told you it was a little bit longer on the return flight because of the uh, the nasty headwind. It's almost a direct headwind. Uh, fifty five knots right off the nose right now. Aggressive headwind. Iberia 3-1, papa, papa, descenso nivel 2-1-0. I like the 5 by wire 3 video. Very cool, man. It's hard Very to cool. believe MSFS 2020 is already four years old and 24 is coming this year. Time flew by. We're just getting started, folks. <laughs> Buddy. It's so crazy to think about, JJ. I actually get like, like I, I, I sometimes I get goosebumps when I think about it. I'm not even kidding, man. When I think about the potential of like what we're about to, when you think about what's going to happen over the next like year to four years, I think it's just going to be like we're going to look back four years from now, and I think we're going to be like, holy fuck, how did we go through, you know, Microsoft 2020 with only three or four aircraft to fly? It's going to be nuts, man. It truly is going to be nuts. When you've got PMDG's whole lineup, <clears throat> you've got any builds with their entire lineup out, 
You've got all the other developers that have been working on things like in the background. Dude, it's, it's gonna be insane. It, it really is, man. Huge no floaties to you, JJ. Thank you for the support, man. Appreciate you, dude. Will all the scenery that you bought in 2020 be in Microsoft 2024? That's the idea, Fish. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work. They have said that it should work. We'll see. Matthew, what's up, my man? Good to see you, dude. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. How much FPS would you have if you didn't have the frame gen on right now? 3940. Does the real plane have eyebrow windows? Those look awesome. Uh, no, put exclamation point eyebrows in chat. Exclamation point eyebrows. Apparently the PMDG secret project is a 7.5. Wow. They've kind of been hinting at that. I don't, I don't think it's a 7.5. And if it is, I mean, good for them, but we've got Bluebird making the 7.5, and I believe that Bluebird is quite heavily along in their 7.5. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Bridget Control, good uh, evening. Sky Travel 2434, flight level 300. I forgot my call sign again. Sky Travel, I gotta remember that. Sky Travel 2434, good evening. Identify flight level 300. Expect Sega 3 Tango arrival for ILS approach runway 1 2. Sega 3 Tango arrival for the ILS runway 1 2. Um, sky Travel 2434. 7.5 makes sense from PMDG because they did start one for P3D, so they will still have all the data. It, it, it definitely makes sense in that aspect of it. It really does. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see, man. It's extremely sad that the 380 never gets to be in flight sims in the first place. Uh, we've got one coming, Baldur's. We've got one coming to the sim here, eventually. What is the Ryanair 3 Uniform Hotel? Ryanair 3 Uniform Hotel, go ahead. I request the sim. Ryanair 3 Uniform Hotel, clear the sim, flight level 210. 210, Ryanair 3 Uniform Hotel. Ryanair 865, Madrid, contact, leave on control. 125, that's about 55, good day. Ryanair 865, Madrid. Hey Cap Afternoon, hope all is well. Ali, good to see you, my friend. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I really doubt they do a 7.5. Saw notes from the live stream. Someone speculated a 787. Uh, Randezzo's response was pretty telling. That it'd be a correct guess. Yeah, he said it would. He said it falls in line. A 787 falls in line with what they would do, but... I don't know, man. Honestly, the way PMDG is, I almost feel like they would go, like, just completely out of left field and make something that, like, no one expects them to make. That's what I could also see happening, so I don't know. I, I really don't know. I personally would love a 787. I would love it. Uh, they do sa share control, similar uh, cockpits. Well, yeah, I believe they use the same uh, screens. Uh, yeah. Heard the was in talks with the old quality ones guys in the 77, just what I heard. Yeah, but there's so many speculations and, and rumors roaming around right now. I honestly wouldn't believe anything. I think it's okay to have like your, you know, what you may think that it is, but. We're never really going to know until we get anything yeah, from... Uh, too far away for what is an LOD? Change. I don't understand the eyebrow change. Uh, sorry for asking. Uh, objects, LOD. It's the way that things load in. 77 makes total sense since the max are basically re uh, ready, according to Rob. Yes. I hope it's not some nostalgic plane only a few care about. They did the DC-3, man, or the DC-6, so... Like I said, don't put it past them. I... I it, it wouldn't shock me. It literally wouldn't shock me if, like, they roll out, like, a Hercules. <laughs> or, like, a DC-3 or something like that, man. It really wouldn't surprise me. Especially after doing, like, all the modern jets and stuff like that. And, like, I don't know. It just, it wouldn't shock me. I would not be shocked. So... Just keep that in mind. Um, let's do our descent wind forecast. Let's also update and see what the weather is doing here into Bilbao. Weather, uh, ATIS, VATSIM, ATIS is information echo, ILS approaches runway 12, winds are 170 at 4, uh, CAVIC conditions 23 degrees, 1020 on the QNH. Beautiful. So we'll bug up 1020, we'll throw that into there. 
We're going to execute that. We're going to load our wins. We'll execute that here in a second as well. There we go. And then we'll go to our progress page. You can see here top of descent in nine miles. We'll go ahead and request our descent. Maybe get away from the airlines, do a fighter or a heli. I don't know, man. Yeah. Money's on a 7.5 or a 7.8. B-17. Rob loves his classic plane, so we'll likely get more of those. That's what I'm saying, man. I could see them just going completely out to left field with this one. I really could. Because if you think about it, they're going to do the max, the, the 787 and the 747, and then release a classic and then maybe back to do something else. I don't know. We'll see. Do control uh, sky travel 2434 ready for descent. Sky travel 2434, descent flight level 100. Break, break. I really have two Limaco. All right, level 103 miles before our descent. So that's good. We'll descend level 100. Good. And we're starting our descent. We'll start getting some things programmed here as well. Uh, we are expecting the ILS. Well, we'll plan for the ILS Zulu. 11155. 11155. We'll flip that up. Five, five. We'll flip that up. Good. Uh, upstairs, bleed pressures. Good. That's all good. Okay. We've got our landing out. Good. Cool. Um, one seventeen on our front course. One seventeen. One seventeen. And minimums category C straight in. Uh, Just be clear, you clear the line, uh, this 5%, yeah, that's fine. 614 right? on the minimum. 614. Uh, holding point Yankee 136 is right. 614. Cool. Do you have any interest in the 737-300? Saw that be flying it the other day. Look good. Uh, the IXEG 737-300 is a great aircraft. Yes. I flew it a ton in X plane. Um, again, kind of like one of those aircraft people doesn't really fit into like my real world ops kind of that I do now on the channel. Yeah, I don't know. Not bad, but like I'm, I'm not screaming for one. I'm not. I, I would, you know. Yeah. I could see them doing a 727. I could see PMDG doing a 727. Rob was talking about it. He was super weird and awkward about it too. He was talking about how he was a, a three-hole man, and I was sitting there like, man, you're on the internet there, Robbie, talking about how you're a three-hole man. You better be careful. <laughs> better be careful there, Robbie, talking like that on the interwebs. He's like, oh, yeah, we're, we, all, we all call ourselves three-holers. <laughs> Careful what you're saying there, man. Tango, one tango, Johan, thank you very much, dude. Appreciate you, man. Dropping the 35 czar. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it, dude. Huge no floaties to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Does anybody fly the 300 anymore? Uh, rare. Very rare. There are some flying, Will. I think there's even still some flying up over here. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're rare now, dude. Very rare. How has nobody made a meme of that yet? I'm kind of surprised there isn't. But yeah. I could see them doing a 7-2. That'd be pretty badass, to be honest with you. Ripping an old 7-2 out of there. But again, that's... It. I find those are niche planes. And I don't know if PMDG's in the market to do something niche yet. I still think there's so much to... There's so much of the market to kind of grab still. I don't know if they'd, they'd want to do a niche plane, but I don't know. Like I said, with the 777 coming, the 73 Max, and the 74 coming, that's that's a pretty big chunk of the market right there as well. So, yeah. Johan, thank you again, my friend, for the 35 Czar. Appreciate you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Canadian North might have some 300s still. Yeah. I know they've, they're rocking some 200s still, so. When do you think we'll get the 7.4? Probably next year at some point, Will. Maybe towards the end of this year, but I think that's a huge stretch. Probably early next year, I would I would feel like it. Have you noticed any change with the cloud turbulence with real cat? I haven't really flown through any clouds yet, doink. No real weather, man. 
you're not really the clouds you know uh, these right types of clouds really aren't going to make you there. bounce around all that much yeah, we um, I'm waiting to see like when we fly through like some actual uh, like, right, proper one, clouds. One for we call ourselves three holers, <laughs> dude. Yeah, was, I had a good good chuckle. I was like, but be careful with what you're saying there, man. A lot of people that would misinterpret that in a lot of ways. Uh, when he's talking about the secret project, yes. He seems though like when you when you watch when you watch scenery, he's he's a very smart man. You can tell everything that he says and everything that he does. He does it with there's a, a process behind it. So he seems like a very a very well spoken and a, a, a very smart man. So I mean, if you're gonna trust anybody to do anything, it's probably gonna be those people, right? I mean, he's just he uh, now. One could argue there might be a little bit of arrogance in there, sure, maybe, but I don't I don't necessarily get that. Not from the video that I watched, anyways. I didn't really get that. I saw a couple people mentioning that, that he's, like, super arrogant and he's full of himself, and I haven't really got that from him, to be honest Hello. with you. Um... Good evening. Uh, you are clear to destination as file via Pinar 3 Romeo departure out of runway 3C right. Initial He's very methodical, yes, that's actually a great, Squawk great four, word. Four, one, two. Yeah. Have you seen Mike Tyson training for the Jake Paul at 56? He's still a beast? Dude, it's Tyson. It's an absolute animal. He never lost it. Never lost it. Robert did say the team knows what the secret aircraft is, but aren't disclosing it. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. Yeah? Hey, we have 37 from the Sierra leaving my space. Monitor, you're going to go by. Thank you for your service. Uh, Ropa 23 Victor Hotel, descend altitude 5,000 feet, Q Nash 1020, clear for Island Zul approach, runway 12, revolve when established. Alright, down to 5,000, we'll report when established for the Island 12 approach. Uh, you so you can see here we've got the Island Zulu, it's going to be the procedural turn. No floaties. Uh, right, procedural the turn coming in. Should be good. I find that if I, uh, you have you your really high POV up, 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 in the up, up, camera up, up, a bit forward, it looks absolutely here. awesome in the Hotel cockpit. Yeah, I don't know what I have mindset to, but I would agree. It's going to be Boeing. They said that they're not limited to Boeing aircraft. Watch it be like an Airbus 340 or a DC-9. I have no clue. Yeah. I have no clue, man. So PMDG was undisputed king of FSX P3D. They have some more competition to Microsoft with Phoenix and Need Builds. I would agree. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Phoenix crushing it with their with their 320 release. Hopefully the 319 and the 321 are just as good. I think they will be. Uh, any builds, again, probably the, like, if you got to think about, like, up-and-coming developers who kind of just, like, came out of nowhere into the X-Plane world with the A300 and... I mean, Anybuilds hasn't been around that long, but again, just a, a heavyweight in my opinion. Some of the aircraft that these guys, I mean, all of the aircraft that they're putting out are crazy, you know? Sent you a DM. Well, we definitely can't open that on stream. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. A300 is yeah, such a great plane. Send flight level 70, uh, seven zero, sky travel 2434. All right, 70. What is our transition altitude yeah, into here, chat? Three, 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 three. Transition altitude is. Uh, uh, 7,000. 
And our Q&H was... Was our Q&H? 1020. Ten twenty. Set like there. Ten twenty. Set there. Good. Gonna be close to the PMGG seven three seven max and seven three seven max. Uh, I fly. Which max will be released first? I don't know. I don't know. One two five decimal five five. Good day. One two five decimal five. Confirm run is seven nine nine golf. One two five decimal five five. One two five decimal five five. That man was eating his microphone. Seven nine nine golf. I will say PMDG's testing and debugging quality control is unmatched. They really get their products in top shape on initial release. I would agree with you as well, Tom. There are very little bugs. Very little bugs. There are certain bugs that get pointed out and stuff like that, but I would agree. Yeah. I would agree, my friend. Right. The cartridges. Um, we want to hit Charlie 3 if we can. So we're going to do our best hit touchdowns. Charlie 3, Charlie 4 would be even better up into the ramp. But Charlie 3 is probably more viable and then up and in. So we'll expect Charlie 3. We're going to go flaps uh, 30 and auto break to position number 3. We're actually about to overfly the airport. This is going to be a really cool approach, Chad. There's a whole like port area here. We should be coming in over the approach. We've only ever landed into the runway 30, so should be good. Need a t-shirt, three-holer club? Bro. <laughs> Landing lights on, engine start switches on. <laughs> Wing lights are on. Seatbelt side is on as well. Ay, ay, ay. You imagine, man. Such a beautiful part of uh, Spain up here. You have like the mountains off to our left over there. Even like the airport, like it's, there's mountains in, all around the airport as well. All these hills, maybe not mountains, but hills. And then you've got the sea as well. We're gonna come in on the approach. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be real nice, chat. Remember guys, if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up button. Can we hit 300 likes? before we get this bad boy down on the ground. Right, uh, that would be incredible. Good evening, Thank you, everybody, who's already three, smashed three, down zero. that thumbs up. I appreciate you guys. Which wear and tear mod do you use for the 7.3? Uh, I think I have a new command. Exclamation point where. I made this the other day. Just make sure that you download the correct one for the 800, 700, or 900, whichever one you're using. But you can just click on his profile. That's the one for the 800, I believe. That's the one that I'm using. I think I missed a call. We'll see. Sky Tower 2434 Madrid, descend altitude 6,000 feet, QNH 1020. Clear for Island Zulu approach, runway 32 and uh, runway 12. Report established. Alright, we'll descend 6,000, cleared for the ILS Zulu, runway 12. We will report fully established. Uh, sky travel 2434. Okay, down to 6,000. I'm going to bug speed 230. Looks like we're about to fly the procedural turn and we'll let him know when we are fully established. So we're going to break off, make our right turn, and then down and in. We're going to descend to 6,000. Um, 5,600 is actually when we can, down to 30, well, we can take it down to 3,500 to intercept. So we'll go down 3,500 now. Because we've been cleared on the approach chat, that's why we're able to as soon as they clear you on the approach, you're able to select your own altitude. Europa you don't have to maintain the altitude that they give you. Only when you've been cleared on the approach. If he didn't clear me for the approach there, we would have maintained 6,000. Man, look at this. Just beautiful down there. Look at the city, the whole port area. It's incredible. We should get a beautiful view of that on the, uh, on the arrival. Descent 
Control, uh, this scenery is absolutely Florida, amazing. Clear, a must so, have, in my uh, opinion, especially with like all the flights that they do out here. It's really cool. Two, three, hotel, runway one, two, uh, clear to land, wind two, two, three, three, There's uh, a Europa out there. Land, uh, for Air Euphoria, 23 Victor Hotel. He's fully established. Europa, He's out there somewhere. You are not following Domingo one tango. You are following another uh, arrival. You have to fly now direct to Bravo Lima Victor. <laughs> Fly director Bravo Lima Victor, uh, apologies for that. Didn't Would be more beautiful in the three holer. That's actually be really cool. I think classic 74. I would prefer a 747 400, which I'm sure PMDG is going to be making, correct? I think they do the 400 and the 800. Passengers and freighters. Look at that view right there. Look at that visual right there. Flying over the port. Remember the Felix taking 45 minutes to set the plane up before pushback? Yeah, dude. A lot of work. A lot of work. I'm not totally against it, but there's just so many more that I would like to see before that. You excited for the 777? Yes, of course. <coughs> What's with everyone in classics? No one likes classics. We're trying to... Uh, oh, there's the the Air Europa right there on final. Um, we're trying to figure out what PMGG's secret project is going to be. We're through 7,000 feet. 1020 on the Q&H. Speed's good at 230 knots. We're going to hold this for a little bit. We just have to let them know when we're fully established. I'm more excited about the 777 than the 380. Uh, yes. Yeah. A lot more potential. Cargo, uh, short haul. Like, there are short flights that happen on the 777. It's not always going to be about... You know, I guess there are short flights on the 380 as well, but they're kind of a lot, a little bit more rare. But there's a lot of flights around the world, short flights on 777s, you know, hour and a half, two hours. Some of the repositioning flights and stuff like that are really cool. Look at the water, nice and calm down there. Smooth as can be. Flew in plenty of BAC uh, L1011s. That's pretty cool. Emirate, uh, Dubai to Abu Dhabi. Yeah, but like how many times can we do that, right? We can't just do that flight over and over and over, right? The visual in the 380 look better, though. Uh, tough to deny that. I mean, it's definitely much more of a preview, right? I feel like if we, uh, you know, if PMDG maybe give us the, the same amount of a preview, maybe we would have had a little bit of a better, you know, visual of, of what it looked like but yeah, i'm excited for both you know, so i don't I'm excited for both localizer is armed uh, vref speed today 153 gonna start bringing our speed back down 210 i'm gonna go fox one as well Localizer should get captured here soon, chat. You can see we're good on glide path. We're a little bit above, pro, uh, sorry, perfectly on profile, a little bit above, sorry, below uh, glide slope. Localizer should be captured here in a second. Here for the sceneries. Oh, this is a cool ass approach, man. We're gonna fly right over the port area. It's gonna be real nice. All right, there's localizer captured. Beautiful. It's arm approach. Bring our speed back down to 190. We're gonna go Fox five degrees. We'll roll that actually to right down to 180. And glide slope has been captured. Currently 12 miles out. We'll report fully established. Madrid Control, Sky Travel 2434, fully established, runway 12. Sky Travel 2434, continue approach. Continue approach, Sky Travel 2434. Shame Flavor did not talk about future updates to the Flavor A32 and X. I mean, I'm sure they're going to come back on, you know, some of the major things that they incorporate that are coming with the 380. I'm sure that they'll probably end up getting backported into the 320 if possible. It's kind of the way that I look at it. Do you see more female flight simmers uh, in the sport? 
Um, depends. I think so. I feel like Microsoft kind of opened the door for a lot more people. Yeah. Man. Look at that approach. That's incredible. Waiting for the 2,500 foot call out. Then we'll go gear down. Flaps 15 degrees. Can bring our speed back down to 170. We need RNAV approaches, correct. Roma 23 Beach Hotel, yeah. welcome to Bilbao. Taxi is turn number one. The uh, Tango and Alpha 2. Tango Alpha 2, uh, stand one, area for you. He's going to give us landing Beach clearance Hotel, now. Sky travel 232434. Roma 7159, descend altitude 5,000 feet, Q-Natch 1020. A little bit bumpy over the port. Descend 5,000 feet, uh, Q-Natch 1020, area over 7159. And Europa 7159, turn so cool. left, heading 325. Gear down, Pops 15, 153 on the speed. All the lights on. Good. I'm going to start the recording now so it's ready to go. Recording is on. Even off this side, like the cliffs and all the houses there, right it's incredible. We've got a nice view of the replay, so we'll watch this on the replay as well. It's really cool. Let's go flaps all the way down to 30. And I'm going to take control of the throttles. Ryanair 2505, clear for Island Zulu approach, runway 12. Clear Island Zulu approach. Should clear us to land now in a second. Let's go joystick cam on. Or the three uniform hotel established to do that. And. My airplane? Uh, Sky Tower 2434, runway 12. Clear to land, wind 220 degrees 7 knots. Runway 12, clear to land, Sky Travel 23. Sorry, 2434, thank you. Ryanair 3 uniform hotel. Right, sounds are up. 1000 feet. Left. Enjoy the arrival, friends. Nice crosswind right now, too. Nine knots. Six knots. Should actually rotate all the way over to more of a headwind, quartering headwind. A little bit high on the slope, bring that nose back down. Minimums. Correcting. Continue. Kick it over, hold it. A little bit firm, that's fine. Nose down gently. Maintain center line. Decelerating. It's like a quartering tailwind. It's a little bit weird. 70 knots, still in them, ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to Bilbao. Not bad, a little bit firm, we'll take it, 200 foot per minute, no float, decent correction. But yeah, the winds were, hold on though, the, the, fa the Facebook pilots will tell us that there were no winds there. <laughs> Mm. Oh, man. It's funny because like 8 knots of wind probably feels more like 20 knots of wind. The winds are very unforgiving in this simulator. Especially on like aircraft like this I've noticed with the PMDG. Stop our flight time. Stand number 2 via Tango and Bravo. Thanks for ATC Sky uh, Travel 2434. All right, let's go ahead and clean up the ground spoilers, clean up the flaps, 
beautiful day of flying, my friends. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, where are we going? Via Alpha and Tango to Stand 2. Alright. That's where we're going. Gate 2. No. Ground Force. Cool, landing lights are coming off, runway turnoff lights are coming off, APU is spooling, engine start switches off, uh, strobe lights off, wing lights off. There we go, my friends. An hour and nine minutes on the flight back, an hour and one minute on the way there. That, I would say, was a great day of flying. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed that one. We uh, very rarely get to fly smart wings, so uh, I thought it would be fun. I thought it would be a little bit something different, kind of out of the norm than what we usually fly. <clears throat> Thoroughly enjoyed that one. We do have a replay, so we will be able to watch the replay as well. What a gorgeous approach into here, though. I uh, would definitely like to do another one of those at some point. It was a nice landing. I felt so. Yeah. There was no wind there. Zero wind. Right now, nine, seven, four, three, turn left Got to miss Active Sky for P3D. Hi-Fi did a really nice job with the wind generation in that sim. They did. Yep. They did. I wonder if Asobo will ever open it back up to, uh... I wonder if Asobo... I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna disconnect here, Chad. Uh, I, I didn't want to have to sit and wait behind him. I wonder if Asobo is ever gonna open up the weather data so that Hi-Fi will be able to make another one. I bet, like... I bet developers like that, that's solely focused on like weather programs and stuff, are kind of kicking themselves. Rex was able to kind of, you know, change around and give us like the Rex AccuSeasons and change the colors of the trees. So I feel like Rex did a good job kind of like adapting. But if you think about it, like Hi-Fi, they've really done nothing, dude. Uh, other than like some some small updates for like X-Plane stuff. They, they haven't really done much, you know? Tim, what's up, man? Good to see you, dude. What livery is this? Uh, Smart Wings. They are a Czech Republic. Czechian. Uh, airline. Don't know much about them. Or that they're from the Czech Republic. APU Gens. APU Bleed. Good. Get ourselves into stand number two. X and Viro tried and failed. I mean, just because there was no need for it. That's the thing, right? There truly is no need for, like... Like, the default weather is really good. You know, other than... I, I <clears throat> We can't really blame... I don't really think it's anything to do with the live weather for the airplanes reacting the way that they do to the wind. I think that's just the way that the simulator is designed by having so many different variables and input on what can make the aircraft feel the way it does when the wind is um you know against it it's i think it's just more so like the development or the simulator needs to change exactly like i've always said and, and this is one of the things and i don't mean this in a bad way but in my opinion the wind reacts the same on the aircraft on a 737 or a 747 Daisy coughed, or a 787, it reacts the same way it does on a Cessna 172. And I think that's part of, like, the the ground effects physics type deal, the wind physics within Microsoft Flight Simulator is that there's... It, there's, it doesn't differentiate between you flying a 737 and you flying an, an, uh, a 172. 15 knots of wind on a 172, yeah, you, you'd feel the hell out of that. 15 knots of wind on a 7.3, probably not so much, right? Because, like, that's just normal. It's just so much more mass, like, to, to move the wind. It requires so much more wind. <clears throat> but you see it. Eight knots of crosswind literally requires a full, like, rudder correction. And it, it, it's pretty gnarly. It's pretty gnarly. Again, I don't fly in the real world, though, so... Um, take what I'm saying as a grain of salt. These are just things that I've noticed. Isolation valve is open. Engine number two is off. Engine numero one is off. Seatbelt signs are off. Anti-collision lights off. Electric pumps are off. Probe heats are off. Yaw dampers off. Fuel pumps are off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back 
to Bilbao. That was a very fun day of flying. I really hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did a blast flying up here today. Tomorrow, we've got a great day as well. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be doing some Norwegian ops. It's been a very long time since we've flown any Norwegian ops, so that's what we are doing tomorrow. Uh, I believe we're going to be going from... Uh, Oslo to Asland and back to Oslo tomorrow. A little bit of a shorter day. I do have a family dinner that I need to attend to. My mom's going out of town for about two weeks, so I've got to go have dinner with her tomorrow night. Um, so that is the plan for tomorrow. So if you do want to join, please feel free. I believe it's about a 50-minute flight on either end. So the stream won't be crazy short. It's still going to be probably like around today's stream, maybe a little bit shorter than today's stream, but it's about 50 minutes each way from uh, Oslo to Alisund and back. And we've got some great scenery. We've obviously got, uh, who does, is it Aerosoft on both ends? I think it's Aerosoft on both ends, I believe. Um, yes, so that should be fun tomorrow. And then Monday, not quite sure what we're doing on Monday. Uh, we'll have to figure that one out tomorrow, but that's the plan at least for tomorrow. As I said, I don't really think too far in advance. To restart the Kutau script, let's go to the aircraft. Let's go ahead and close all the doors oops back doors thank you close close and close good let's go to pmdg setup we're going to go to panel state load we're going to put this bad boy on final we're going to execute that good <clears throat> let's go upstairs we'll get some lights on for replays good 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 and we'll make sure that flaps are set to 30 degrees good those are remarkable graphics. It's beautiful, man. <clears throat> this uh, the simulator in this part of the world, absolutely beautiful. This is a hidden gem of an airport. I didn't even know this airport was around until a couple months ago when uh, I got an email asking if I wanted to do some promotions for it. And I said, sure. I remember departing out and coming back in and I was like, wow, <clears throat> this is crazy. Why is there a copyright on top of that bus? Um, okay, let's hit the play button. Beautiful. Puts us out on final. We'll bring this forward here just a little bit. <clears throat> Even more like right about here should be good. Watch a few of those. Sweet. Cool. Going to take this time now to thank all my mods, my donators, and my sponsors. Thank you everybody for the support, guys. You guys are truly amazing. Without any of you here, none of this would be possible. So seriously, thank you all for the support. It is uh, very, very, very much appreciated. If you haven't done so, don't forget to smash down that thumbs up on your way out. You know the plan for tomorrow, doing some real world Norwegian air shuttle. I think it is air shuttle, red nose, air shuttle, red nose, one of those two. Uh, ops tomorrow, Oslo up to Alisund and back. It's going to be a great day of flying. If you've never flown up in Norway, please do join me. Because if you like the visuals today, Norway is uh, just as beautiful. Uh, just to the left of the center line. Not bad. I would say that that touchdown was actually pretty decent. Um, again, just I think my initial lineup to the runway is probably what put us off there. I don't think it was an overcorrection. I think we actually corrected quite fine. It was probably just my lineup with the runway. Not lining ourselves up properly, but not too bad. Happy with that one. Not a lot of float on that and keeping it uh, nice and positive at 200 feet per minute, keeping the... Uh, keeping everybody happy guys thanks for coming to hang out if you cannot donate using a monetary value i want to thank you guys just as much for being here hanging out and stream uh smashing down that thumbs up button <clears throat> flying with me on vatsim thank you everybody for being here truly do appreciate it man uh it was a blast there's the thousand footers yeah not bad could have been a little bit smoother i don't know about 200 feet per minute it actually looked pretty smooth but it might be a little bit more i'm going to rewind this all the way back here and i'm going to give you guys a beautiful wing view now of us coming in and uh, you can enjoy it. Actually, should we go port side here? We'll go port side for now, and then we'll go to the other side for now. Enjoy the replay, friends. Enjoy the outro tunes. And I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow for our real-world Norwegian ops. Happy landings, my friends. <clears throat>